Honorable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council on meeting on Tuesday the 14th of November 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Members, please be seated. Members, can I welcome you and officially declare the meeting open, the uh, meeting of the City of Adelaide Council on Tuesday the 14th of November 2017. Welcome, Councillor Milani, namaste. Welcome after your travels, nice to have you back. And uh, I hope everybody is well. Members, I'll take you directly to item three on your agendas, uh, apologies and leave of absence. I understand, members and ladies and gentlemen, that we have a full complement this evening in terms of elected members, or we certainly soon will, but I do understand that Councillor Maloney will be, us for, be with us for part of the meeting, but not all. Members, I will take you then immediately on to uh, item four on your agenda, which is confirming the minutes from a previous meeting of Council held on the 24th of October 2017. I've got a mover with Councillor Martin. Can I have a second, please, members, to adopt Councillor Clarahan? Thank you. Members, any questions or queries about the said minutes? No, I'll take that straight to the, to the vote. Those in favour of adopting, those against, we will carry and adopt the minutes of the meeting held on the 24th of October. Members, we have two deputations this evening, taking you directly to item five on your agendas. Uh, the first is from Mr Ian Vag with regards to Adelaide Oval SMA licensing application. Mr Vag, you're welcome. Please do join us. The council will afford you a period of five minutes and the councillors may then elect to ask you some questions. Thank you. Welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber, sir. Thank you, Lord Mayor, councillors. This process started with an advertisement in the Messenger uh, on the 29th of September um, and that advertisement defined what the application that you are considering tonight was all about. Most peculiarly, that application form, that definition of what we're talking about doesn't appear in any of your support documents. Um, clearly an administrative oversight, yet it's central to the whole thing. I have extra copies here which I'm happy to hand out after I've finished for questions. But I can read them. There are two, thing, two items. Redefine the licensed area to include additional areas adjacent to the North Gate and North Park lands and adjacent to the East Gate, and that's the business of the plans that caused some confusion but have been more or less sorted out now. And variation to extended trading authorisation and variation to entertainment consent to include the above mentioned areas. So both trading authorisation author, and entertainment would be, um, consent would be given in those areas. Now, and this incidentally is the only document that any residents have had in nearly seven weeks 
of this process going on. There has been no other document. This is the document that presidents have relied on. When I analyse what that meant, it meant that the SMA would have the permanent right over the north, north and east parks to hold open air amplified music events on virtually every night of the year with alcohol between the hours of 7am and 1am next day. Not surprising residents were alarmed and not surprising that the, um, the CBS has been rather overwhelmed with objections. Um, I spoke at the APLA last night um, and the, they were de de debating, <coughs> sorry, they were considering the same motion put forward as you have here in front of you and with the same executive summary. Um, at that meeting I was able to demonstrate that the, if that <coughs> recommendation is implemented, we would end up with what I've dubbed the SMA's pub in the park. The east and north external bars would be open all day, from, or could be open all day from 7am to 1am, this is on an event day. Separate and multiple activities from those occurring in the Oval, defined only by the SMA, could be carried out, which could include live music, large TV screens with interstate international sporting events, <coughs> advertising, cultural events, basically, you name it. Um, so, uh, is it any wonder there is a lot of consternation? Um, now, I asked a question I haven't uh, in, in a, a series of polite emails with the uh, SMA. Adam, I asked a question which doesn't appear to have been asked by anyone else, uh, referencing the real the advertisement, if you like, and I said, uh, asked, if you don't want it, because the, the SMA is saying they don't want it, if you don't want it, why did you ask for it? And the response I got was, the SMA's view is that it is for the Commissioner to place conditions on the licence that he deems necessary in approving the application after receiving all objections. That has to be interpreted as meaning if you've got want any change at all to what we've asked, uh, which I did, the horrendous thing I read out to you earlier, then you're going to have to object. And that perhaps applies to the Council as well. Um, so, I want to look at this from the resident's point of view. That piece of information is the only information that has been given to residents. The residents from this advertisement had 23 days to work out what this meant, to decide what they were going to do. Up to the last seven days of that was taken by having to mail their objection to the SMA and then they um, uh, Anyway, we are now 49 days, 48 days, and the council hasn't decided what it's going to do, and it hasn't even consulted the residents. Frankly, given the neglect of the residents by the council, I believe that the council does not have the moral authority to support this application um, at all, in any way. The only thing I believe that would be proper would be for the for it to be rejected by the council and them so they can start again. Thank you. Now, members, notwithstanding this matter will be debated in this council chamber, but do you wish to ask Mr. Bagg any questions? Councillor Martin? Yeah, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bagg. Um, Look, I, I understand uh, that you are speaking on behalf of uh, North Adelaide residents, and I understand your points of view, but what is uh, the view that people are expressing to you? What are residents saying to you? The residents, well, it's been a variety, but basically they are very concerned. I mean, they say a threat on their normal quiet lifestyle. Um, they, uh, one lady I spoke to, I would say an old lady, except she's not much older than me, uh, um, who's sharp as a tack, um, not quite as mobile perhaps as she could be, she said to me, if they do this, I will have to leave, leave my house. I couldn't stand it, I'd have to leave my house. What sort of organisation, government organisation, imposes the sort of stress on its citizens that makes them react that way. If she was your mother or your grandmother, how would you feel about it? What words would you use to describe, use to describe the SMA? 
who is effectively, in a callous way, they have frightened the residents with something they don't want, um, have been totally callous about it and have used bullying tactics. Um, it's totally untoward. Um, most of the other residents are very concerned, well, they wouldn't be here tonight. Many of them have had to give up other meetings to get here. Um, there are many more than the subset we have here who have objected. Members, do we have any further questions? Councillor Clarahan. Thank you for your presentation. Um, in terms of residents' position adjacent, you know, general position and, and thoughts in relation to the Oval being adjacent to the Cathedral Residential Precinct, do you, would you say that the residents already put up their fair share of inconvenience and impacts on amenity? Is there a balance there? Um, it's noted in your um, executive summary that this, what is effectively a breach of the agreement made between the council and the residents to have no licensed activity on the north and east parklands, particularly the north parkland. This is, someone has approved that in the council without any reference back to the residents, and that has been going on for three or four years. There, none of the residents have objected. It's a live and let live situation. We understand that we're living close to a lot of activities. A lot of people are there because they choose to live close to those activities. They go to the Oval. I mean, they're not complaining about the Oval. They go to the Oval. They like the Oval. The Oval's great. And they go to the other things which are around there along the cultural strip and so on. So um, we've learned to live with it. We, um, parking was going to be a problem, but that has settled down. Um, and I guess we put up with the noise that goes on <coughs> late at night every now and again. But for the potential to have noise any night, potentially every night, I doubt they manage every night, but any night, I think is an ask too far. Councillor Malani, you have a question. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr Vag. Um, look, um, Following up from your uh, commentary, then that you know you, you enjoy you go to the oval and enjoy the um, the oval. And you've, you know, there's been um, so it's manageable, and, and um, based on your comments, you've learned to live with it. And there's no issues with parking, etc. My understanding is, if there was enough conditions in this, based upon the status quo of the, the Adelaide Oval, it's not around any night. It was about the current status of the 20 something events that um, I think are actually being talked about here. If there are enough conditions put into the licence, would that appease and give you the certainty that you're looking for? Um, uh, thank you. With respect, I would say that is a question I should be able to ask of council. Council should have spoken to the residents. Council should have given residents some reassurance that they were interested in them. All the conversations have been between council and the SMA. There has been no conversation. There is still no conversation. And residents still believe that the ambit claim, which would end up in a horrendous situation, uh, is what is being put forward. So, well, it is what's put forward. It's what's in front of the license court. And that's why I made my comment about your um, moral authority certainly your legal authority, your moral authority to support this. You have not consulted the residents at all. You haven't even told them it's happening. You haven't, it's unbelievable. Most, most people everywhere, I think, but certainly in North Adelaide, believe that one of the objectives of the council is to look after their interests, to maintain their safety, obviously physical, and, uh, and their way of life. Um, it's hard, to, it's hard to put into different words, but do you get what I'm saying? That um, I, I have spoken to a lot of custom, uh, customers, so I've spoken, used to be in sales, but I've spoken to a lot of residents, and um, it's not a matter of weighing up, well, we're doing pretty well now, let's take a bit of a hit and let them do it. I'm not sure that what the uh, SMA is asking for would be all that, what they really think they're asking for would be all that bad. What concerns me is the way they are doing it. 
um, they have somehow managed to take over a oper licensed operation in the parklands for three or four years, albeit illegally. They went through the motions, but that was never put to council. I don't believe it was ever voted on here. After you had gone to all the trouble to impose the restrictions that are there, um, and then they say, well, now we're doing it for four years, no one's complaining, let's make it permanent. This is rewarding bad and bullying behaviour, and I, I don't, I personally think you shouldn't reward bad behaviour and bullying behaviour. If they've got a good idea, which we like, let them come back, tell us what it is, do the proper consultation, and let them make a proper application for just what they want. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Can I just can I get some clarity from you? Because there is you know, on page seventy seven of this report is a list of suggested license conditions that have been recommended as part of this report, which essentially pick up on the point you just made, which is around status quo. I'm trying to I'm trying to get a read that those conditions I uh, sorry, I, I did address that confusion earlier on, but I perhaps possibly not well enough. Um, those conditions that have been proposed for you to vote on tonight are presented as being uh, simply restoring the status quo. Yes, yeah, so it's not. So it's not any night of any. It's not about amplified music any night. It's about those specific activities that they're currently. I, I want to get an understanding that will these license conditions. Lord Mayor, we're not debating. We're no, asking questions. I'll, I'll accept these as genuine it's really, questions, Councillor. We have to get Martin, down to the level of understanding here because I think we're actually all talking about the same thing here. I, I will allow this, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, please continue. Well, I just. I think, I think your concerns that around about um, that you, you've said that you know what is happening now is acceptable. These conditions enable it's only about what is happening now. It doesn't talk about any night. I didn't say it was acceptable. I said no one's complained because we're very nice people. Um, but it is important, and, and if you could let me ask that in more detail. This is one of the things I dislike about this whole process. Here is an executive summary, right? You read that, and that that describes the status quo and says what they want. And then there are recommendations, and the recommendations start off uh, 3.1. The redefined license area can only be used for ancillary activities that support events or activities occurring within the Adelaide Oval. That is right in line with what they want. But then we have 3.12. Passive low-level activations only, i.e. background music. As I explained last night, passive low-level activations only is a block of words that has no inherent meaning. It can mean nothing, it does mean nothing, or it can be made anything you want it to mean. And the people who would decide what it means is the SMA if it's in their licence. I likened it to, um, I call it a Humpty Dumpty phrase. Humpty Dumpty, to remind you, is a, a large, walking, talking, sentient egg in Alice Through the Looking Glass. And his most famous quote was, words mean what I want them to mean, no more and no less. And that's exactly what that phrase does. So that phrase allows the SMA to define any activity they like at all in in the area on that map. Can I, can I just check? Can I just check my question to you? Is on page seventy seven the, the conditions? That's what we're, that's the question um, I'm asking you I'm about. Not sure if I, I the license conditions. It starts on page seventy seven. Yeah, I haven't got that with me. It's, it's, can, can you just read it? It, it, it is actually what it's a really critical part of what we're actually talking about today. Sorry about this, my reporter. Because I think we we'll potentially have have appeased what your concerns are, but it's look if you look at sort of. Um, so what question are you asking, Mr. These are the same notes I'm reading from. Though, the, just exactly the suggested license condition. Okay, the numbers are different. The number I should have referred to is well, my quite having a background report to somebody who's making a deputation and seeking a clarification on the administration's intent is not what this is all about. 
But we are not here to prosecute me, people. Uh, they get their we are looking at the licence conditions. Councillor, really now, Councillor Mullaney, what precisely are you asking, Mr. Vag? I want to know if the if the residents have seen them and are happy with them, because I suspect maybe they haven't seen them. Again, a question for you, Councillor: Have the residents seen them? Thank you. Has anyone here tried to make them? I can tell you they haven't. Uh, but where I was mistaken, I was looking at a different page. Same information though. I referred to 3.1.2. It's 34.1.2 where it says passive load level activation. That, that clause does two things. It allows a disconnection between the activity on the oval and the activity in the parklands. Um, when you take it in account in, um, in together with the licensing hours in 3.3, they allow licensing from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. So they could have three or four different events through the day, even though there's a football match on in the afternoon, they can have three or four different events in that area um, between those licensing hours. Um, it is deceptive. It is deceptive, and that's the point I'm making. If they, they may have a wonderful vision. They may have a wonderful vision. Share it with us, work with us. Um, we are not difficult people. I can, vouch, I can promise you we're lovely people. Mr. Vag, thank you. <laughs> members, in absence of any further questions, I'm going to thank Mr. Vag right. for your deputation. Members, thank you for your questions. Members, we have a second deputation request which I've approved this evening. Could I please welcome Mr Andrew Daniels, Chief Executive Officer of the State of Management Authority. Mr Daniels, welcome to Adelaide City Council Chamber. Uh, we can afford you a period of five minutes and the members may elect to ask you questions thereafter. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you very much for the opportunity to address Council on this liquor licensing application. Um, I'd like to put this application into context and hopefully to really alleviate a lot of the concerns that Mr Vag has raised. In context, the initial liquor license application, or liquor license for the Adelaide Oval was granted back in October 2013 when the Adelaide Oval was still under construction before that first ashes test in December that year. And that license was granted after very extensive consultation through the Office of the Liquor Licensing Commissioner. It contains a number of conditions as set down by the Commissioner and I believe it's proved very successful over the last four years. But there have been two issues which this particular application seeks to address. The first is an error in the delineation of the liquor licence line. When the current liquor licence was approved back in October 2013, it excluded part of the East Plaza. The reason it was excluded is because that area was still under construction and so the licence that was provided for the Adelaide Oval for December 2013 had to run along the line of the construction activity. Uh, as a result, we have a bar just next door to the eastern ticket window which actually opens onto an unlicensed area. Uh, an unfortunate error, but an error nonetheless. The second matter we seek to address is that because the Adelaide Oval is a no smoking venue, we have over the last few years sought temporary licences for the use of a beer caravan near that north gate to service patrons uh, who exit the stadium uh, for a cigarette. That actually mirrors exactly the same facility that is provided at the northern side of the stadium. And it also mirrors the same provision for patrons that was provided at Amy Stadium for many years. Over the last four years, we've lodged, on average, around 20 temporary license applications per year to allow for the activation of these two areas. And they have been successfully managed with no complaints. And in fact, I think a lot of times, people not even noticing that they were there. The SMA itself is only making this application because the Office of the Liquor Licensing Commissioner has advised us that it will no longer provide a continuing temporary licences. Temporary licences are just that, one-off licences. And, and he has advised, or his office has advised, that as soon as you have temporary licences in an ongoing fashion, then properly get your licence sorted out to reflect its actual use. And that is similar, I understand, to the activities he's taking with a number of licence holders in Adelaide. The SMA is absolutely not 
making a land grab, nor are we interested in any format of setting up a pub in the park. And so also I have to say we are certainly not, I believe, we are not acting in any sort of bullying fashion. What we do seek is to fulfil the wishes of the Commissioner, as he has asked us, and to ensure that our licence provides an ability to continue to provide the same service that we have uh, successfully provided to our patrons for the last four years. We fully expect that the Commissioner, in exercising his responsibilities under the Act, will set a number of reasonable conditions in relation to this licence. We fully expect and we respect that such conditions will include the stipulation that these two areas only be used on days when we have an event on the Oval, i.e. not on a day when there's a function or other activities, just when we have an event on the Oval, and only for the period in which those events are actually being undertaken in operation. Consistent with our mode of operation for the last four years, uh, we absolutely do not want to have the use of these um, areas outside of those times. We as the SMA have over the last few weeks offered to consult with local residents by reaching out to them or those who in particular who have advised us of their concerns or their or expressed an objection and a number of residents have come and seen us and taken up that offer. A number also have not. Lord Mayor, I'd like to stress that the SMA, uh, in managing its oval and its licence area, takes its responsibilities extremely seriously. And I do hope you can all see that in the way that we have maintained the oval and its surrounds. We absolutely value the relationship that we have with our local residents and local businesses. And we seek to have very good long-term relationships with all those parties. Our request here tonight is merely to formalise into the liquor licence that which has been undertaken successfully for the last four years. So, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions any elected member may have. Thank you, Mr Daniels. Members, do you have any questions of Mr Daniels? Councillor Martin? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and thank you for speaking to us. Just a couple of uh, questions of clarification. When you talk about the uh, the bars, the liquor facilities, uh, are they facilities operated uh, by the SMA for the profit of the SMA, or are they operated for the profit of AFL, SACA, or do they take a share of the, the proceeds? Or? Uh, in answer to your, your first part of your question is yes, all the facilities at the Adelaide Oval are operated by the SMA. Uh, in answer to the second part of your question, there is a very complex financial arrangement about where income goes in relation to football and in relation to cricket or other events. In very broad terms, simplistically, income that's generated from a football event goes to football, income that's generated by a cricket event goes to cricket, income that's generated by other events stays with the SMA to pay for the running of the Oval. Thank you. Um, and look, the next question is that the uh, the proposed extension uh, to the licensed area, which is detailed on uh, the map that we've been supplied uh, with at page 79, um, <coughs> shows a green area uh, where the extension will impinge on what appears to be the uh, safe pole and disabled car parking areas. Um, is there likely to be a long-term impact on the disabled parking facilities? Uh, excellent question, and no, absolutely not. So, what we currently, the request and the dealings with the Commission has been to have a very clearly and easily identifiable limit of licensed areas. So, if anybody you know, carries alcohol out of that area, it can be clearly seen that they are leaving a licensed area. So, what has been, for clarity's sake, the hard stand area near that north gate has been utilised, so it's a very clearly, easily identifiable area. It is predominantly used by disabled and safe hold parking, and historically the location of the beer caravan has been close to the, the wall of the Adelaide Oval. We do not, the, the, every one of those car parks is used uh, on a game day, as I'm sure you've seen. Uh, well, that, that's the bit that puzzles me, that among disabled people, that is people who have difficulty moving uh, on sticks, in chairs and the like, there are people consuming alcohol. 
Uh, how does it how does that work? Yeah, it doesn't quite. It's not they're not quite together. When you actually see the area and the way we've actually run it for a number of years, because we actually have put up we put up little fences and things around where this caravan goes. It doesn't impinge on where the car park area actually is. It's a triangular area. So we actually do keep them uh, differentiated, but the purpose of that location is so Safe Holland, the licensing authorities, can clearly identify what a licensed area is. It doesn't actually impinge on the car parking area. Uh, am I correct in understanding what you're saying is you don't need that area, but you're uh, asking for it anyway? Well, the recommendation put to us was have the license go, the line go around that area. There can then be no confusion as to what is a licensed area and what is not a licensed area. Where we actually place the caravan within that can move by a few metres here or there, but if you've seen it in the past, it's always up again and has for the last, since 20, early 2014, been quite close to the wall. It doesn't impinge on police access or egress or patron movement but it does provide the service that they have historically been used to receiving, um, for particularly for a football camp. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Clarion, did you have your hand up? I think you may have. Okay. You've got a question. I did, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, could you please just clarify for us, did the um, Liquor Licensing Commissioner suggest or request that you change the nature of your licence? The Liquor Licensing Commissioner advised us that he would no longer be approving temporary licences because a temporary licence is just that. And that we therefore need to, his, he, is, he has told us, or his office has told us, that we need therefore to approach Council and, and commence this process that we did back in about April uh, of this year to if you have a temporary matter that keeps happening again and again, get your licence sorted out so it correctly reflects what is actually happening. That's what it, and hence, we're here today. Okay. And um, what's the relationship between the existing temporary licensed area and the dry zone that is in place throughout all of Council's um, parklands? Are you aware of that? I, I, I can't answer a technical question like that. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sure I can get appropriate okay. advice, but I don't know. And just a final question. Um, the conditions in terms of what has been a temporary licence and what you, at the request of the Commissioner, or advised you, what are the differences in the conditions and the area, because I note in our report, it tells us how wide an area is, but it doesn't say whether this is an increase compared to what was a, what was issued to you for the temporary license. The temporary, my understanding is the, and I, I can defer to, uh, to our head of uh, hospitality for the detail, but the best of my knowledge, um, the terms of the license, the temporary licences, are uh, for the period of an event, for a particular event, a game of football or a um, an Adele concert or, or whatever it may be, essentially for the for the period of, of that event. Uh, the area that's been delineated, I think there is, once again, this is to the best of my knowledge, a slight extension, particularly as it, along the east. It just reflects the uh, AOSMA core area, the, the area that we have, our leased area, because the original license actually sort of comes back against the wall because we hadn't had that handed over. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, I, I really don't know what the complete, and it might have changed between license to license, what the total area at the north was, but it would be very similar. I mean, all we actually require in terms of that area is a sufficient area, obviously, a reasonable area in which to run a beer <coughs> caravan. The recommendation to us in discussions with the Commissioner's Office was delineated in that way, very simple and clear. And uh, I'm just aware that in the wall of the estate, uh, we, we hear that there's actually a bar set up. There is, that's correct. And that the, that the areas were separated previously, but the, now they all run together. Yes, that's correct. When the original licence was provided to us, which was before the Oval actually even opened back in, in 2013, we actually got a liquor licence area external to the Adelaide Oval, which encompassed Telstra Plaza. And then that the license you'll actually see on that one of your drawings, you'll see the license area incorporates Telstra Plaza, then goes back hard against the wall. That actually reflected what was back then 
what was still a works area. And so that was a construction fence. Uh, and in fact, when we've gone back and looked at what happened back at the time, it was actually noted this needs to be addressed in future once this area is handed over. That redress has never occurred and therefore it's been brought up at this time. It becomes quite um, a ridiculous scenario that we actually have a bar built into the wall. It actually opens out next to the, next to the eastern, eastern ticket window, which if, if you hand a, a drink over that bar, it's into an unlicensed area. So whenever we've gone to use that bar, we've had to apply for a temporary licence. But it's on, that is on our uh, leasehold area. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Greatly appreciate it. And Councillor Milani, you have a question for Mr Daniels. Thanks, Mr Daniels. Just in really simple, we all acknowledge that we um, have the residents' best interests um, at play here, but from a, just in layman's easy language, in terms of the operation of this, with the conditions that are highlighted that I've read in my report, if I'm a resident, what am I going to notice that's different to what's happening now, apart from we're fixing up a bit of red tape? Can you just explain that to me? Uh, well, Councillor Milani, all we want is to continue to do exactly what we've done in the past. We don't want to cause alarm to residents, I certainly do understand, and I would agree with their alarm if, if um, we wanted to do you know, amplified music at one in the morning in the north. That would be totally inappropriate. We don't want to do that at all. All we want is the licence to have appropriate conditions that allows us to continue to do what we've done <laughs> since uh, 2014. Thank you, Councillor Blaney. Councillor Slama. Thank you, Lord Mayor, Mr Daniels. A two quick question, if I may. Um, first one in terms of the areas that you show on the map. Are they all paved areas? There's no grass areas? They're all hard stand paved That's, areas? Is that what you mean? That is correct, Councillor. They are all hard stand areas. Okay, thank you. And the second question was in relation to Councillor Clarahan's comment and your response to that. I was wondering if you could clarify. You mentioned that the Commissioner um, requested that uh, you stop coming in 20 times a year for the same thing. And he's likely not to issue any more licences, which means that if you don't get this permanent licence, you have no licence, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Okay. Members, I don't see any further hands. I'd like to thank Mr Daniels for your deputation of the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Thank you very much indeed. Members, that concludes our deputation for the evening. Uh, and what I'm going to do, members, in the interests of the members of the gallery's time, is I'm going to bring this matter forward because, members, item six on your agenda, which was advice from APLA, has not been uh, forthcoming for tonight's meeting because there is no advice of APLA with regards to this matter. APLA had a debate about it last night, but APLA did not reach a consensus position and henceforth there is no advice for you to consider. So what I'm going to do, members, item 7.5, which of course is Adelaide Oval redefinition of existing permanent licensed area, page 72 of your papers, I'm going to move it forward and I'm in your hands. And I have Councillor Martin with your hand up, so I'm going to look to Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to move a variation, if I may. You uh, can. Now, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran has agreed to second it. What we're going to need to do, we do. I understand that we're having a technical failure with regards to your iPad screens on your desks, members. So I'm going to ask you, Councillor Martin, to whatever you're about to do, to read it slowly, deliberatively, to make sure that it's captured, and then I will ask that it be read back because it will not be on your screens. We'll look for a seconder. We'll have a debate, Councillor Martin. What okay, uh, and look uh, to assist the administration. Uh, I would say in the first point, I'm mirroring to some extent what's already written. The variation reads that Council 1 notes that the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority has applied to consumer and business services, has applied to consumer and business services for an extension of their permanent licensed area. So what I would do, Councillor Martin, Beyond. I'll ask our Secretariat to give you the nod once each of these sections has been captured so we don't need to re rework this. Yeah, sure. So we're nodding. Okay. Of their permanent licensed area. Beyond 
the current permanent license area. Two, requests the administration convey to consumer and business services that the council. Slow down, please, council. Requests the administration convey to consumer and business services that the council does not support any extension to or redefinition of the permanent license area. If you could read that again, please. Sure. Request the administration convey to consumer and business services that the council does not support any extension to or redefinition of the permanent license area, comma, except as might be agreed from time to time, except as might be agreed from time to time as a quote, one off special event, close quotes, except as might be agreed from time to time as a one off special event under the Liquor Licensing Act, as is the current arrangement. Under the Liquor Licensing Act, as is the current arrangement. Just before you continue, continue Councillor. Sure. Would you like that reread that section, Rachel? I'm happy for it to be read back. All right. So, have you read back that section, please? Read back that section, please. Point one notes that the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority has applied to consumer and business services for an extension of their permanent license area beyond the permanent current license area redefinition of their permanent license. No, uh, that, that first point reads for an extension of their permanent licensed area beyond the current permanent license area. Councillor, how long is your motion that you're proposing? Because I'm going to two, two paragraphs. So two par it's just okay. I understand. I was going to suggest you bring it up. Yeah, it's pretty much as it's written anyway. And two requests, or do you want to read that back to me? Yep. Request the administration to convey to consumer and business services that the council does not support any extension to or redefinition of the permanent license area, except as might be agreed from time to time as, quote, one off special event, close quote, under the Liquor Licensing Act, under the current arrangement. As is the current arrangement. Okay, I'm just going to get a. Has that been captured? It has. Now, Councillor Martin, do you have a second? Councillor Moran, are you seconding said motion? You are. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours to debate. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, as uh, Mr. Bagg suggested, I think we really need to go back to the beginning, to the 27th of September. The Liquor and Gaming Commission published an advertisement saying it had received from the Stadium Management Authority an application to, quote, redefine the licensed area to include additional areas adjacent to the North Gate uh, in the North Parklands and adjacent the East Gate. Now, uh, the SMA told APLA last night that the green areas, and if you all turn to the map, the green areas on page 79 of your papers is that area. This is the extension. 
This is not where the current licence activity occurs. It is an extension. Therefore, it is not the current practice. It is an extension. It's a new ball game. Have a look at it. It's the green area. Now, the 27th of September statement also asks for a variation for extended trading authorization and variation to entertainment consent to include the above mentioned area. Now, that means that the Commissioner is flagging that the SMA wants to change the rules on selling liquor and providing entertainment in those areas. That's what it means. Now, no matter how much we debate whether or not it's possible for the SMA to assure us that there will be an acoustic guitar in there or a clarinetist or a bongo player, it will come down to what the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner decides. He has that application in front of him and that is what we need to focus on. The SMA is asking for a new ball game. Whereas uh, the question we should be asking is, do we want to agree to an extension of drinking, smoking and music in the parklands adjacent uh, to residents of the area at their cost? And to the, the detriment of businesses, I might add, Lord Mayor, and I think all of you have received an email from uh, the general manager of the Cathedral Hotel who says, this is sensational. Now you're giving this special treatment or proposing to give this special treatment to the SMA which pays no rates and I pay more than $30,000 a year, give me the same conditions. Council, you owe me that much. So what you're also being asked to do is to consider opening the floodgates or alternatively saying to our ratepayers, well, we have two rules, one for the SMA, one for ratepayers. Now look, this is very clear cut. The residents are, in my view, saying don't do it. And, and I'm saying also this is creep. Councillor Martin, that's your three minutes. Uh, may I have a short extension? Members? Yes. yes. Chamber takes Thank comfort you. if you have two more minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm saying to you that this is creep. This is the SMA moving outside of the boundaries of the Oval, which were established in 2013 by this council to operate new business to the detriment of our ratepayers. And look, Lord Mayor, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I, I hear what the Stadium Management Authority is saying, but this is not what this council agreed at its June 27th meeting. It was a secret squirrel meeting, which the CEO has now agreed the results of which can be published, and our determination at that meeting, and I'm happy to read it to members if they wish, was that this is not the kind of activity we want in the parklands. We don't want any part of it. And indeed, the creep will go on. Now, I have a map here that fell into my hands that is dated June, which shows a new entertainment area right next to the one that we're being asked to consider. Is that a coincidence? Lord Mayor, this is symptomatic of SMA creep. We must take a stand, and I ask members here tonight to agree to adopt this resolution, which is the status quo. We are allowing the Stadium Management Authority to continue to operate as it has in the past, and if it requires that it needs to go outside of the boundaries that were established by Council in 2013, that is the Oval, then it needs to go and see the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner, and it needs our approval each occasion. That is not only fair, it is reasonable to all ratepayers, residents and business. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> Members, Councillor Martin's motion was seconded by Councillor Moran. Do you wish to speak to a Councillor? I'd like to reserve my right. Reserving your right. Members, do I have any debate from the floor? Councillor Hender? I've just got a question to our administration. If you work on the basis that, um, that, and I think this is a well, perhaps not the consensus, but the majority of you in the chamber, that we don't want to give the SMA any more than the current status quo, and the SMA have said they don't want anything more than the current status quo. Um, and if you work on that basis, do the proposed amendments in the original document 
cover that off at all? I mean, to completely cover that off? Or what, what, what would we need to do to make sure? I, because in my view, um, there is a difficulty, I think, with what Councillor Martin, I understand the intent, but there is a difficulty with what Councillor Martin is, is proposing, and that is the, um, the Liquor Licensing Commissioner is saying, I'm not prepared to do that anymore. So um, we've got to balance off the practicalities versus the protection of the residents, which is obviously what we what, what we want, and I think what we discussed at our previous meeting, that we're all pretty keen to make sure that the residents are disadvantaged. Um, so that being the case, what restrictions do we have? Um, I, I can't. I, I need to know whether I can support. Whether I need to support Councillor Martin's um, proposal, or, or whether there's an alternative to just restrict like mad, so that we maintain the status quo and how we might do that. Can I just get some comment on administration comments? CEO, can I bring that to your attention, please? Yep, Claire Mocker, thanks. Um, through the presiding member, the report um, recommends some proposed conditions if council was to support the licence. Um, we believe those recommendations maintain status quo um, at this point. Thank you, Councillor Hibbert. Now, members, I've got the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Bershaw, followed by Councillor Abiyad, followed by Councillor Wilkinson, DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, could I just have a clarification? The thing that keeps going round in my head, which um, uh, I spoke to Councillor Clarahan about, was um, whether it was suggested or requested. Did we actually hear from the Liquor Licensing Commission to say that no further permits were going to be issued and therefore if we don't approve this licence, that that, like, that area can't go ahead? No, That's thanks. my first question. Through the presiding member, um, yes, that's correct. We did receive advice from um, the commissioner, CBS, that they wouldn't grant any more limited licences for this activity and that they requested that um, we liaise with the Stadium Management Authority to investigate the opportunity to look for permanent redefinition. Thank you. The other thing is, can I have clarification that the area that is sought under the licence application from the SAMA is actually different and in fact larger than the area that is currently included in the permits that are issued? Through the presiding member, yes it is. Um, however, the area that they currently, not in the northern section, the area on the eastern boundary, it is. Uh, that's to allow flexibility for them to operate the bar or the delineated licensed area on operations um, you know, in different spaces along that eastern side of the oval. Um, thank you. Um, the, uh, where's my other question? Um, so my understanding is there have been between 20 and 25 permits granted in the last year that have had no direct complaints. And I understand from residents that they may not have complained, but we don't have any direct complaints about the operation of the licence. Um, however, um, if it is an all or nothing, and that includes trade and entertainment, um, then we can't in good conscience um, support the potential of something happening every night. Therefore, what I'm asking is, can we put more specific conditions in? If I read the, the recommendation that's currently there, it's not terribly specific. So for instance, is there a maximum number of issue of, of um, per, or nights we can grant in a year or um, so that we, and I, that goes to what Councillor Hand was saying, if, if we're comfortable with how the SMA is currently using the area, mm -hmm. can we put conditions around the area, how often and for what purpose so that we are very, very clear it's not for entertainment or music and it's actually for facilitating um, what is currently used? Through the presiding member. No, I just want to know, I want to know the answer. Yes, we can. We can request additional conditions be placed on the licence for the Commissioner to consider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abiyad, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Abiyad, floor is yours. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just uh, uh, might be just one, I think, 
part of my other question got answered just before by um, from a question from the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just in relation to the comments made by Councillor Martin, and this is what I want to make sure that we're on the same page. With reference to the green area, is that a new proposed area or is that the current existing area where the licence or the 23 licences have been provided in the past? Through the presiding member, yes, it is. Councillor Abiyard, that area has been utilised as part of the limited licence application, so within that 25 per year. Um, the northern section is utilised more frequently than the eastern side. But that current green strip, that's what I'm trying to get to. This is, this is what has been currently or previously approved in the past as part of the 25 instances at which this was issued. Through the presiding member, yes, that's correct. Okay, so that's the one thing I needed to clarify. Um, just another one quickly that I also wanted to clarify, if that's okay. Uh, I think we're pretty much all on the same page, including the SMA and the residents around the status quo and making sure that we keep that. Is there an opportunity at which we can assist our residents in the SMA to, um, to write to, to, the, um, to the licensing commissioner, in essence, to provide a single license for the status quo? I mean, why should that be very challenging uh, if they've already indicated they're not prepared to issue multiple licenses and multiple applications? Why can't we, in essence, provide the support for the status quo, um, as is, which is to some degree the comfort of residents and everyone else. And does this recommendation, that was my second question, and does this recommendation as it currently put, not by Councillor Martin, the original, does that provide for that? Because I think Councillor Martin raises some valid points. Through the presiding member, Councillor's landlord can write to the commissioner. Um, and outline in detail the um, conditions that council would want to see imposed, including hours of operation, um, limit the number of events, and certainly um, make it clear that it would um, only um, consider um, status quo um, activities and describe those. So in the, the follow-up on that question, sorry to admit, there's a final one. Uh, uh, that, that does this recommendation take that into account? Because I, I don't think it does to correct with Councillor Martin. Maybe. The current licence um, is more prescriptive in terms of the hours of operation, so Council wished to alleviate res residents' concerns and lift those out of the current temporary licence and place those in its um, recommendation than it could. So, Lord Mayor, given everything that I've heard, I'm probably um, happy to move that we defer this item. Um, and I'm happy to state the reasons to why we need to do that, but I'll seek a second from you, through you, Lord Mayor, before I speak to it. So, members, you have a move to defer, which is effectively an amendment. You need a seconder for that to proceed. Lord uh, Mayor, may I just procedurally observe that this matter is going to the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner before we next meet? Therefore, a deferral will simply mean that the Commissioner will meet before there's a position determined. Could we, for the benefit of the Chamber, the CEO, have a clarification for all and sundry about the date on which this matter is going to the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner? Uh, through the presiding member, 27th of November. Listen to the North Adelaide councillors. Okay, so Councillor Rabia, uh, this matter will be going to the Commission or the Commissioner on the 27th of November. Our next council meeting date, I suggest, would be on the 28th. Is that correct? It would require a special meeting prior. Um, if, with your permission, Lord Mayor, I think it's crucial, and it's because I care about what the residents want, and they have told us clearly today that they have not been heard. Uh, that they have not been communicated with, and we've heard that tonight. So I think if we want to take their concerns into account, that of the SMA and that of the Chamber, including Councillor Martin's comments, I think it would be wise for us to defer, deal this quickly, and with your permission, Lord Mayor, call for a special council meeting. This is a very important matter, and we're missing. I don't want to create policy on the right. Councillor, what I will do is it will depend on your support from your fellow elected members whether they support you in your move to defer. If the elected member of the chamber, I will respect the will of the chamber. If the members do support you in your move to defer, I will call a special. The floor is your, you need a seconder and then you need to debate your reasoning for your deferral. Your seconder is 
Councillor Henderson, you had your hand up first. Who's seconding this motion? Okay, so Councillor Henderson. So Councillor Aviard, you have a seconder. Now debate. Uh, Lord Mayor, we've heard very clearly from the residents today. We've also heard from the SMA. We've also had some valid points, very valid points from Councillor Martin um, and also in seconding Councillor Moran. Uh, there are seriously a few concerns that we've got noting. We've been told tonight by Councillor Martin that the Greek area is a new area, that there's a creeping process that's taking place. All of those things are issues that have been raised. Also, we've heard very clearly tonight from residents that they have not been communicated with to, and they're not across some of the, um, I guess fundamentally, a lot of the conditions that are sitting in our current report that they may already agree with or may not agree with. I think there's an opportunity for us to seize the moment in this, to try to get the best outcome for the community and at the same time for the city and state through the provision of this licence. I agree there's no point for us to go to the Liquor Licensing Commission 25 times a year, have our staff write reports and responses, have them do the same thing. If we're trying to produce the same result and only the same result, if that's what we're trying to achieve, Lord Mayor, the status quo, where there is no creeping, where there is no additional licence requirements, where there isn't an, ex uh, an expansion in the area, if the status quo is what this council is prepared to support and it will cut back the red tape, that's what we stand for right? and that's what we want to try to achieve here. I think I, see, I sense that there's comfort from the Chamber around the status quo and what's currently occurring. So if we can eliminate the 25 applications a year, that would make life easy for everyone. And I think through a deferral, we're able to look into that take into account Councillor Martin's concern, speak to the residents and ask them and their views about some of the um, uh, some of the licence conditions that have already been stated in our documents, and then call for a special council meeting and finalise the issue once and for all. And so I'd ask members to support the deferral and we will act on this quick. We have only a couple of weeks, we'll act on it quick and we'll get um, that back to the chamber through a special council meeting and it deserves the time and the respect of that time will be there for us to consider it. So I'd ask members to support it. So members, you are debating an amendment which is effectively a move to defer it, to defer this matter. Uh, Councillor Hendy, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to it? Reserve my right. Deputy Lord Mayor, you had your hand up, followed by Councillor Moran. Um, it was really just a suggestion if we could actually uh, go back to the old way, actually, and just do a committee followed by council at the next committee meeting so that we get it through very quickly. That would bring this matter to a head next week, members, which I'm sure, given this time of year and your heavy workloads, would be um, uh, something which could be done on the same evening of the committee, which I'll need to check with the CEO to regard other, other items, but it does seem sensible on the surface of the suggestion. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran? Well, I don't think it does seem sensible, and um, I object to, um, to this deferral motion. We have enough information uh, to deal with this now. Um, I'm not prepared to compromise. I'm not happy. I don't know why this. The, the residents have been incredibly long suffering and decent. I think to allow a smoking area out by the northern gate is repulsive. I smoke. That means mothers, children, babies walk through a pool of cigarettes where they've got a little beer van. Our Oval is the biggest drinking venue in the state, and yet they have to pop out there. It, we, we, I would be very surprised if the liquor licensing would allow people, would, the public to have to walk through a designated smoking area. To say that the Oval is smoke free is ridiculous. I've admit they have a roped off area near Oval 2 for smokers. I've been there myself because I am a smoker and that is well away from women and children and the public. It is disgusting to think that the North Adelaide Gate, it just becomes a boozy beer and fag thing that we all have to walk through to get there. Say no now. I don't care about the status quo. I think it's outrageous the SMA has done this. They have the huge plaza on the southern side, which is a designated smoking and drinking area, a large area. I probably the only council was here when this was this deal was struck. And hand on heart, Mr Daniels or his predecessor said, we will keep the smoking and drinking outside the stadium on the southern side where it faces the river, where it doesn't face people's front doors. Pennington Terrace is a, people's homes are there. I don't want this horrible pool of smoke. Where, where in the world can you smoke? I can't go to the convention centre and pop outside and have a cigarette by their front door. I can't stand near a hospital by the air conditioning vents. I can't go anywhere. This is a Trojan horse. 
and we should say no tonight, not waste our precious time and listen to the residents. There are 130 individual residential complaints saying no. I'm sure that the Commissioner, if we turn this down tonight and the SMA went on individual occasion and said we want a one-off thing here, even though I don't think that it's a good idea, um, we'll probably still grant them that. Let's not bend over backwards so people can have a fag. I mean, honestly, if I said let's go out there into the CEO's garden and have a smoking area, you would all turn up your hands in noses in horror at that. And yet Andrew Daniel Walsh is in here having promised never to do this to the North Adelaide entrance, that their parklands have already turned out to, a, to be a car park. I really appreciate what Councillor Abiad's done, and he's, he's always a good conciliator, but occasionally one has to say no. And if this means that the stadium management can't have the smokers out on the North Adelaide gates, too bloody bad. They shouldn't be doing it anyway. They build a two-sided, one more minute, two-sided bar on the eastern side saying, oh, it's so ridiculous we can't have the liquor licensing out there because look, we built a two-sided bar. When they built it, they knew that the two-sided bar would be going into an area where they couldn't hand the beer out. So clearly, it showed malintent back there. This is the creep, and a lot of creep. Um, do not fall for this. The residents are being nice. They don't like the beer tent. They don't like the smokers out there. It is a disgusting idea, and I am a hopeless smoker, and I wouldn't go there. There is a smoking place provided in the Oval. You are being sold a crack cock off. Say no now. Support the residents. They don't have a chance to change their objections. They have said no. I've never seen so many objections to something. You should listen to your ward councillors. This is why we have wards, an area councillor. There's a ward councillor saying no, there's a ward councillor saying no, there's a, an area councillor saying no, there's an area councillor saying no. This is our patch, and you should listen to us like we listen to you in your patch. Say no now and don't waste their time and waste ours. <laughs> We have a uh, alternative motion from the beginning from Councillor Abiyad is moved to amend to defer. You're having a debate. Your next speaker is. I don't, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, of course. Um, I was on council when we established the licensed area, and there was a lot of debate, and I said much of this at APLA, about the extent of the licensed area. Um, and um, I don't believe that the bar on the eastern side was a mistake. I think that that was done with the intention of, after the licensed areas have initially been thrashed out, we'll come back later and try and redefine the areas as is being sought now. That's exactly, um, you don't have to be a Socrates to, uh, to uh, see that coming. Um, I think that was deliberately done with that intent. But at the moment, that area down the eastern side, people just walking into town, they can walk down the path, they can walk down that avenue of trees, they can walk down the eastern side of the oval. That will become a fenced off area. Councillor, okay, so just for the benefit of your fellow elected members, are you speaking for the deferral or against the deferral? Thank yeah. you. Thank you for clarifying, yeah. Councillor. Um, <coughs> so, um, you know, I just see this as commandeering part of the public area that is used you know, by um, other men. It's just basically a way of expanding the um, drinking capacity of the, of the venue. Um, and um, uh, there are already areas which are within the designated areas where, where they can provide for people to have a cigarette out the uh, uh, northwestern side uh, behind the stands there. You know, there's areas where they can provide for, for this without actually expanding into this area. That green triangle area, that's a third of the size of the oval proper. You could fit a lot of people there. Um, and uh, you know, if the um, application was maybe more, more defined, limited to a much smaller area that actually closely matched what what they're currently doing. Councillor, can I encourage you, please, yeah. sorry to drop you there, yeah. Councillor Wilkinson, but can I can please encourage you to debate the relative merits of the deferral or not? Yeah. You're, you're effectively de debating the substantive. I'd like you to debate the deferral merits, please. Well, I think based on my understanding of the situation, um, I think the original motion is put by um, uh, 
uh, Councillor Martin is, is, is valid. It's, it's ultimately going to get decided by the Liquor Licensing Commission, but you know, we've had 130 people put in their submissions. They've been very polite um, in not, not lodging complaints and stuff like that, but now when it's formally lodged, you know, they're, they're uh, articulating their views, and I think we should be listening to that. And um, uh, I think uh, a far better crafted application should be made if, if one's, you know, not, not just a gravel that alienates the, um, uh, all of that area, particularly down the eastern side as well. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. So, members, please, can we stay focused? We are debating the relative merits of a deferral motion or not. Councillor, uh, Councillor Hender, followed by Councillor Maloney. Yes, so just in relation to the deferral, I think what, what Councillor Abbott is seeking to achieve is a common sense outcome. I think what we both, we all sort of understand that the, um, the Oval works pretty well as it currently stands, and I go, I attend events there regularly. I've never been appalled at anything I've seen. It, it seems to be working very well. Um, and in fact, most people consider it you know, a delightful experience to spend time at the Oval. Um, uh, so I think we've got an Oval that's working quite well. We've got some residents who clearly want the status quo no more, and I think that's absolutely fair. Um, uh, I, I accept what Councillor Martin is trying to do is protect the residents. I think we all want to protect the residents. I think the best way of doing that is, is allowing a bit of time for all the parties to get their heads together to craft something that is tight enough to make us as councillors feel that the residents are being protected in the way that we think we ought to be protecting them. Um, and to, you know, which, which I think is picking up exactly what Councillor Wilkinson said. You know, a well-crafted um, application. Well, perhaps the application was made to, to, to be too wide. Now is the time to give people the chance to get their heads together and craft something that is a well-crafted tight application or a well-crafted tight set of guidelines or um, restrictions on the licence so that we can stand uh, comfortably in front of our North Adelaide residents and say your interests are well and truly protected, we're confident they're protected, uh, and, and that nothing more than the status quo will be allowed. That's exactly what Councillor Abiad's uh, amendment is seeking to do, to give time to the parties to reach that common sense position. I welcome it. And we're holding things up for only a week. I think it's worth a try. Thank you, Councillor Hander. I'm going to assist you, members. Can I encourage you to say, I support the deferral motion, yes or no, and give you a very succinct reasoning as to why, because we are dancing between a alternate substantive motion and a move to defer. Um, Councillor Maloney, the floor is yours, and then I think I had Councillor Martin's hand up. Is that correct, Councillor Martin? Did you have your hand up, Councillor Maloney? Well, Mayor Whitman, we, were, we are allowed to have a little bit of a conversation about this, but I'll support the deferral. Um, I'll be honest, I believe the current motion um, does give the uh, protection based on the advice from the administration of status quo. That's my that's my view. But I also take on board the fact that the residents are saying they don't have that level of comfort. So it's our job to go and get that level of comfort. And hence why I will support the deferral. There is a clear message here, apart from maybe one or two about status quo, which either has come from the deputations we've heard tonight, both sides, and most of the um, councillors in this chamber. So we just need to work a little bit harder to get clarity on that. Um, and if we need to take an extra week to do it, we can do it in the time frame that is um, is uh, on the table. Um, let let's do that. I think um, you know I, I think there's been some language used around this chamber tonight that's trying to make this a bit of a fearful debate. And I think we just need to stick to the facts. And um, if that's what it takes to defer this matter and do that, then I think that's what we should do. Thank you, Councillor Malani. Councillor Martin, talking to the deferral. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, I, I thank Councillor Abiad for proposing a compromise, as he so often does. But on this occasion, I, I think it's unwise to be compromised in this way. Uh, I believe that by deferring this to a discussion about the conditions under which we might agree to uh, permanently allowing the SMA to continue in the way it has, we are effectively saying to the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner, there is landlord consent. The landlord agrees that the SMA is entitled to operate outside the Adelaide Oval in the manner it's proposing all we're having a discussion about is the conditions. 
Now, that is not the position that is being put by the residents. The residents are saying that they are unhappy about any change that would see an extension of that activity. And believe me, contrary to uh, uh, Councillor Milani's uh, genuinely held belief, uh, the administration's recommendation does allow for an extension. I say, let's, let's leave the Commissioner in no doubt. Let's say to the Commissioner, there is no landlord consent. We are concerned about this. If it transpires later that the SMA wishes to pursue the matter, then it's perfectly entitled to go back to the Liquor and Gaming Commission with another proposal, and perhaps one that is more detailed, uh, provides more information rather than the carte blanche proposal that's put before the Commissioner at this time. Lord Mayor, there is only one response, and it is to say we do not agree with uh, uh, the deferral. We, we want to see this matter settled. We want a firm position for the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner. And if the SMA wishes to bring it back at some other stage in a more considered fashion, I'm not going to oppose that. Uh, that's, that's a debate we had at that time. But what we have here now is not sufficient for us to be confident that what happens in the Liquor and Gaming Commission is going to be in the best interests of our ratepayers. Okay, members, do I have any further debate? So I'm now going to, before I hand you back to Councillor Aviart, I'm going to share a personal view. It's unlikely that your presiding member will be voting on this matter, but I would just like to share that I, uh, I concur with Councillor Martin's closing arguments. Uh, Councillor Aviart, you're summing up on a move to defer. The floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is, the, the move to defer is not dismissing the opinions of residents, that of the SMA or any of the councillors involved that are pushing this issue. All it's providing is some breathing space, to, as we discussed, to put the facts down. We don't always have to be the no council, Lord Mayor. We should take a leadership approach and we should try to facilitate an outcome that is suitable for the community and one that is suitable also for the SMA and Adelaide Oval. I mean, Adelaide Oval did bring a lot of positive things for the area and to the city as well. And these are things we need to take into account and it goes parts and parcel. So yes, we can easily put up a wall and say no, and you've got to go work out on your own and go re-decide and renegotiate the outcome. Or we can take a leadership approach and facilitate, now that we've heard from 130 respondents, uh, and now that we've also um, heard from the deputations tonight and also the concern of councillors, we'll be able to do that over the next week and come up with what I think would be a very tangible outcome that would suit all interested parties. I don't think it's okay that after us saying 25 times yes for something, that we decide to say no permanently. As long as it's the status quo. We have said yes 25 times. We have supported this in the past, and we've supported this area in the past. So in essence, if we are providing for a status quo, Sorry, Claire, I didn't mean to cite one thing there. <laughs> but, um, so this is Lord Mayor, really, at the end, if we are able to say yes, do it within the status quo, get a consensus from our residents, uh, and also be able to still support the SMA in this process, then that will be a great outcome. If we can't, Councillor Martin and Councillor Cohen and, and Councillor Moran and also Councillor Wilkinson, then the answer will be no. But just give us the link. Let's try to work this out. And if we can't, then the answer can be no. Nothing, no events will be held this week, correct? In that area? So we could, we could wait the week. We could wait the week. I would, I would ask members to support this. And please, let's try to take a common sense approach and try to facilitate an outcome by leadership instead of blocking. I think we don't need to do that right now. Thank you, Councillor Aviad. Members, you have a motion to an amendment to defer in front of you, so I'm going to put that to the vote. Those in favour to defer? Those against? Okay, so the motion to defer fails. And members, we go back to the substantive, which was Councillor Martin's alternate motion, uh, which Happy to vote to put that the motion be put, Lord Mayor. Oh, no. You need a second? Yes, you. you no, well, Councillor Aviad uh, got in first, so I would need a seconder for this motion to be put. Don't have one? Do have one. Councillor Antic, so members, I'm now going to put it to the vote. 
So members, you clear what you're about to do? Yep. We have a seconder to put. So we're voting to have a court argument. Yeah, that's not fair. You've had a say. I'm the sound. Members, just please bear with me. Sorry, through the presiding member, Councillor Abbey, because you moved the amendment, you cannot move a formal motion. It can only be moved by an individual that hasn't already spoken. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Councillor Ante, you're moving to put. Do you have a seconder? Oh, no. Councillor Hender, you're seconding the yeah. motion. Well, Mayor, I had my hand up to ask a question before Councillor Ante put his hand up to put it. So it's just a question. I'm, I'm going to accept that question, Councillor Ante. It's a question. So my question is um, uh, to the administration. If we do vote um, for Councillor Martin's motion, is it right that the SMA can make another application yeah. with a tighter, with a more restricted yeah. application? I just, I just need to be absolutely sure. I don't want to be cutting anything off at the pass here. Yes. I just have to get that advice. Through the presiding member, my understanding is they can. Can I ask a question? Okay, one more question, members, then I go back to Councillor Antic, who had a motion to put. So, Councillor Clarehan, you have one question. Have we already granted landlord consent? For what, Councillor Clarehan? For the SMA to apply and, ve and apply for a permanent licence for that area? Yes, as um, detailed at the councillor briefing a couple of weeks ago, a letter um, to uh, the commissioner was sent back in April um, confirming that landlord consent was given to um, just make the application. And we'll give it again. To make the application. To make the application. That doesn't actually mean that we have consented to it. That's correct. We have not consented. Are to we it. required to consent to this application? Quite separate from what happens in the legal and licensing uh, com uh, in the Office of Consumer and Business Affairs. Um, so what council's role as landlord is, is to say yes or no or provide conditions. So we don't actually have to come out and say, yes, we support this application. We give landlord consent for this application. Because to me, there seems to be two issues. One is to ask for, for, for the State of Management Authority to- Councilor, just fo focus on the question, please. Just I'm trying to up, clarify. Ask a question, you will get One answer. is to ask for landlord consent. And the other right that Council has is when, even when there may not be a new application, is to actually be party to any complaint process. So are we clear about those two issues? Landlord consent and our right as an agency with the police to actually present to the consumer and business affairs. Correct. I mean, we it do. could be that we yeah. did consent through delegated authorities. Correct. The other question I'm Correct. asking, have we done that? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, so members, I'm going to, Councillor Marley, you have a question, you're not debating, no? I've not spoken. Not you haven't spoken? Um, I've, got, I've got to go to Councillor Antic because he's basically put his hand up. He wants to put this motion. He'll need a seconder to do it. There is no seconder, so I'm going to continue the debate. Councillor Malani, the floor is yours. Lord Mayor, I'd like to um, just explain why I'm voting against. I have not spoken. I have not spoken. Not to the motion, only to the move to defer. We're back on the substantive motion, which is the alternate motion, which is moved by Councillor Martin, to which Councillor Lani has not yet spoken. The floor is yours. Lord Mayor, I um, uh, would like to explain why I'm not going to support Councillor Martin's motion, because I believe our job is to 
put the conditions together that, that become the enablers to make everyone happy. There are no conditions. To, this, it's a plain no. Our job is to put the conditions. We, we, you're asking the SMA to come back with an alternative application. We have the, it's the right time now for us to influence what the conditions are. We, we're just going to come back and have the same conversation because we, it's, the application will come back. It's all about the conditions. And that's what you're all, you're all being lazy, to be honest, by saying no. Our job is to put the conditions around this. We're just going to have the same conversation. We, we should have deferred it so we could um, have a conversation with the residents. We said no to that. Our job is to, put, to have a discussion about the conditions to make sure that everyone is happy and that we can um, enable status quo and, and get and remove red tape, that's what we're doing here. So members, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll foreshadow the original, but I don't think it's any um, any point, but um, we're just saying no. We'll be back in this chamber having the same conversation in a few weeks about what are the conditions gonna be. Thank you, members. So do I have any further debate on the substantive motion from members who have not already spoken to the substantive motion? Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you for the opportunity to speak, fellow members. I've just been holding off in case I needed to put an amendment up. But um, I don't think this is about the conditions, and I don't think it's about red tape reduction. I understand the, why the Consumer and Business Affairs would ask for something that is continually occurring uh, to become more permanent because it stands to reason it's no longer a temporary licence if it happens 20 or more times. It does need to be a permanent licence. What concerns me in this situation is that there are, it's not a straight transfer. It's not a straight transfer of conditions from temporary to permanent. It's there's other changes that have been made that I think has put the cat among the pigeons, has created a sense of uncertainty and a level of mistrust. And I think that's very unfortunate. Had it been a very clear transfer of conditions in terms of area, in terms of hours, etc., I think we could have managed it very simply. But what we've got now is this issue around creep, around stealth, and we see it happening in various things that come before us, be it planning approval and building development, where people get the approval and then come back for another bite of the cherry once the major consultations occurred. And I'm really disappointed. I do understand the Commissioner saying, no, I'm, this is not a temporary thing when it happens 20 times. We need to make this a permit. I do understand that. But what I can't accept is the fact that there has been a change to the area, there has been a change to the hours, and I think we need to hear loud and clear that there are people who are not prepared to take that. People of, I think the residents and businesses in North Adelaide have copped it sweet in terms of coping with the huge influx of people. And we don't deny that our Oval has been a fantastic success. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is the need for balance between the residential amenity, local business sustainability, and a very large um, stadium authority. Okay, it's got to balance its sheets as well, but not at the cost of our long-term residents, ratepayers and businesses. There needs to be a, a bit of give and take, and I think our residents have given enough. And I think that the Stadium Management Authority needs to be brave enough to be upfront and actually come back with a reasonable <coughs> proposal as people have mentioned, with very clear conditions that are no different to what we've already had. So for that reason, I certainly support the substantive motion and I also support the arguments that have been put forward by Three minutes, residents Councilor. and businesses in North Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor. So members, do I have any further debate on the substantive? 
Councillor Moran, you reserved your right on the substantive debate. Do you wish to re-enter it before I hand you back to Councillor Martin for a sum up? Uh, no, thank you. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours to sum up on the substantive alternate motion. Yes, I will take uh, the advice of my colleague, Councillor Antic, and be as brief as I possibly can. Uh, I, re I remind everybody again that this decision is about what the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner has advertised that the SMA wants. It is about an extension to the area in which the SMA has operated and an extension to the hours with the addition of entertainment. I have moved this motion because the recommendation from the administration took it a step further and suggested that there should be a redefinition that allowed passive low-level activation only on other occasions. And those uh, occasions could be not only sporting events, but major concerts or events at the Adelaide Oval. We do not want to see an extension or more creep. And this motion, if you support it, will say to the Liquor and Gaming Commissioner, we don't like this, we want to see something better, and if they come back with something better, that's great. But let me, let me remind everyone, leadership in this instance is not about deferring to see how we can help the SMA get their proposal up. It's about saying, this isn't good enough. Go away, come back another day. Councillor Martin, thank you. Members, I now put this matter before you. Those in favour of the substantive alternate motion? Those against? We carry. Thank you, members. Division, Lord Mayor. All those members in favour, please rise. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Abiard, Councillor Hender, Councillor Moran, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Clarahan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Antic, Councillor Corbell. Thank you, Kylie. Members, we are now going to debate a tree. Item 7.1 on your agenda, significant tree removal on Park 19. It is page four of your papers. You have a recommendation to approve. Councillor Abiyad, you are... Councillor Abiyad, you're moving as printed. You are to have a seconder. Councillor Martin, <coughs> reserving the right. Councillor Martin, you're reserving your right. Uh, I'm happy. Members, any queries, questions or debate on item 7.1? Councillor Abiyad, oh, Councillor Wilkinson, you have a question or you're debating? Uh, yeah, on my um, printed copy of the agenda, there's no map or photograph of this tree. Is it the big um, eucalyptus? Camalgalensis River Red Gum in the middle of Victoria Park, or is it on near the edge? I refer that matter to our CEO, please. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I'll refer that to Kent if I could, as he's um, most knowledgeable about this one. Through the presiding members, sorry, do you repeat the question? Uh, there's a very notable river red gum in the middle of Victoria Park. Is it that river red gum or is it one near the edge? Because there's no map or photograph on my agenda papers. Uh, through the presiding member, it's, uh, it's in a group of uh, trees along the pathway that runs north south through the park. Um, there were uh, photos and locations supplied with the report. It's not on my printed report. Thank you. Thank you. Members, for those that are using your iPads, uh, it's, there is a link, I understand, on point 13. The tree sits adjacent to a popular walkway in a park that holds many events and there's a link there. I presume that's where the link is, Kent, is that correct? Yes, that's true. Okay, so members, those who've got their iPads, you'll find a link with an image of the tree and the location of the said tree. Okay, okay Councillor Wilkinson. Okay, I'm now going to put that before you, members. Those in favour of... Those against? Councillor, some of you voted in favour? You did? Okay, members, that item 7.1 is carried. I'm going to take you directly on to item 
which is dockless bike share operations within the City of Adelaide, page 8. You've got a recommendation to note. Now, members, this is a recommendation to note. This would invite questions, but not necessarily debate. Item 7.2, moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to debate this? Is that moral? Councillor Slama, members, I look to the floor. Councillor Abiyad, members, I put this before you, those in favour. Those against, we carry item 7.2. Members, I look to our CEO for item 7.3, please. Through you, Lord Mayor, look, I'd like to request this item be withdrawn so that we can do some further work and report back to you at a later date, so uh, if that's okay. Members, I will withdraw that item from your agenda 7.3. The CEO will advise as to when that matter is going to come back before you, so I'm going to take you straight on to item 7.4. Proposed amendments to the Vaughan Place Land Section Community Open Space, moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Martin. Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to speak to the matter? We can't do that yet, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to it? No. Councillor Clarehan, you would like to speak to it? Lord Mayor, I'm just a bit uncertain as to where um, this actual area where the, um, the particular business wants to set up. I couldn't see a, a map that showed me exactly where the outdoor dining was proposed. Allow me to refer that through our CEO. Uh, Tom McCready, could you help us? The Howling Owl, where does it want to set Three up? Three presiding member, there was actually a photograph which was attached, which is actually adjacent to the front of the property. Um, it's uh, identified in the yellow section. Could you tell me which page it is, um, please? It should be in one of the inserts in regards to the report. And it's uh, under section 12, constrained to the area shown in this photograph on the link. Uh, thank you. It's not opening for me. If I may. Nah, it's not opening. If I may, Councillor, it's um, literally, um, it's behind Rundle Street in that little Palace Nova area. That's where it's already set Sorry, started. explain to me where it is. It's not the opposite Palace Nova. Yeah, it's, it's, in the it's Palace inside Nova. where the Palace Nova is. It's yes. on the corner opposite to the elephant. Um, uh, up there. And is it, is it actually on? The insert to the cinemas yes. or is it on the walkthrough? Insert to the cinema. I'm very happy with that. Thank you. Okay, members, do I have any further debate on this matter? I'm going to go back to your mover to sum up. Oh. Summed up, members, I'm going to put this before you for the vote. Those in favour, those against, members, you have just carried item 7.4. Item 7.5, members, we of course have dealt with. Item 7.6, members. Councillor Antic, what are you looking at? Amended, amended motion, Lord Mayor. Okay, Councillor Antic, what is your amended motion? Given the lack of screens, uh, you're amending what you have before you, or are you moving an alternate motion? Well, can I do that from this Probably. You can move an alternate motion, the choice is yours, you just need to yeah. let your chamber know. Yeah, well, I will, I'll move an uh, alternate motion. Okay, now. Now, I, don't, I normally have the benefit of a screen, but I'm happy to read it out. So members, just bear with me, Councillor Antic. I understand the hard copy of what you're looking to move as an alternate motion may already be on the desks in front of each of the members. Members, do you have this? Yes. It's an email, it's a printout of an email with Donna Sacker written at the top of it. Yep. You've got it, members? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does? So all right, well, can I, this is effective, but well, it is not. Just, just get a councillor, Moran, you are, you're seconding it. So members, can I just confirm before this debate starts, please, does everyone have a copy in front of them of councillor Antic's alternate motion? Yes, you do. So councillor Antic, you can speak to your alternate motion. You have a seconder in councillor Moran. The floor is yours. I'm going to read it out, Lord Mayor. For the, for the benefit of the gallery, yes, please. Okay. Um, well, the motion is largely similar to the current substantive, but it is that the council approves the details of the consultation for the proposed east-west bikeway, as included in the report and the, and the confidential report listed as uh, item 13.1.1 on the agenda for the meeting of council held on 14 November 2017. That's all current. Uh, I delete the rest of it and then uh, import the following. Save that prior to the commencement of the consultation, the engagement strategy as it's referred to in the materials 
uh, adopted by the consultant firm shall be approved by council and shall address the following matters, including but not limited to uh, one correspondence and materials which will be provided to the interviewees. I want a better way of putting it. Two questions to be put to the interviewees. Three, a grouping of interviewees into separate categories, including a category for property owners, business owners, and residents of Flinders and Franklin Street. So I've got my second. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, it might, um, I was just trying to find, as I went back through with a fairly arduous uh, debate about the SMA or something. Um, and so I lost my page there. But anyway, I, uh, I'm just having a look here, so if you just bear with me. Um, the, uh, the original uh, motion I moved was only two weeks ago, and I must commend the staff for getting back on them very quickly. It's, um, it's a very good thing. Uh, the consultation that I had envisaged would, and the brief that I envisaged had, uh, in, uh, I thought would incorporate uh, a little bit more meat, if you will, a little bit more information about what we're actually going to go out and say to people who we're interviewing. Uh, that is the ratepayers and the residents uh, and business owners down that stretch of, uh, of road, because of course, um, I think often very much the way in which we consult, the manner in which we <coughs> determine and dictate the answer we get. Um, the reason I did that was because in the past there have been concerns about the answers that have been received <laughs> in the consultation process. For, as an example, I spent um, uh, large periods of time door knocking that area during the, um, the campaign in 2014 and received an overwhelming uh, response that Frame Street was loathed and detested by the locals, yet the consultation seemed to suggest otherwise. So uh, I think we do need to be very careful about how we approach it, and that's the, that's the purpose of, uh, of this motion. I, what I want to know is what are we saying to them? I mean, are we going to be saying to these people um, that they need to be aware that according to our own report of the 12th of September, uh, that um, they will, as a result of this bikeway, lose car parks? They will lose outdoor dining and it will congest the traffic to one lane either way for long periods of the day. Now, my view is if the ratepayers and the business owners are told that information and they are comfortable with that, um, then by all means we should, we should take that on board and, uh, and progress it. But we can't go to them with glossy photos uh, of happy people on sunny days and not tell the full story. So I'm very I'm not suggesting we will do that, or we have done that. I'm just suggesting we can't do that. We need to be very clear that we are telling it as it is, because it's my view that uh, some of the matters which arise from this bikeway will not be pleasantly received. That's certainly what I'm hearing already. There is a huge groundswell of people who are intimately involved with the street, who own businesses down there, and whose livelihood depends uh, on uh, the street uh, for their for their business. Uh, and that is, of course, the, the rationale between point three, the ability to be able to group those people and the respondents into groups. Uh, as interested as I am in what Christian Hag has to say about the bikeway, that is one component. As interested as I am in what the North Adelaide group residents say, and I mean that, I am, that is one component. It needs to take a different and succinct, succinctly different weighting to that of the people that are intimately affected by this, because it's all very well for us to talk up the virtues. And just three minutes, Councillor. Uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. Members, uh, they, they need yes, to know, you have they comfort, need to know no more than two minutes. They need to know the answers, because at some point, and I can tell you, uh, a person that I know, so a friend, friend of mine, uh, spent all, all morning yesterday counting the numbers of bikes which went down that way, and he picked up between 30, 60 and 100 bikes in between the various areas. So um, we are not talking about huge numbers of people using this. We are talking about huge numbers of businesses and ratepayers who, who live and breathe that street. So um, we need to be very confident that what we are putting to them is as it is and what they are returning to us um, is, uh, is predicated on the basis of the, all of the information. So I would like to see that. That's all I'm asking for. I'd like to see that engagement strategy that the consultants are, are going to agree with council and before it goes out to market, if you will. Uh, and so I ask you to support the motion. Councillor Moran, you seconded Councillor Antic's motion. You'd like to speak to it? Yes, look, uh, I won't. Um, um, Councillor Antic has pointed out the problems with the bikeway very well, so that is going to be a contentious issue. Um, and it may seem overly suspicious, but um, I don't like to put too fine a point on it, but we were really royally um, unhappy with the way that the Frome Road um, 
uh, consultation came. So it's a bit of a matter of once bitten, twice shy, twice bitten, thrice shy. Um, any counsellor, um, you know, in case you're thinking about not getting the information, any, I, I, I'll tell you now, I want that information as an individual counsellor anyway. Um, so you might as well vote for it because um, these, the questions being asked to our public cannot be kept secret from the counsellors. And I regret that last time when Fry and Roy was being done that I didn't take more interest. I mean, we were sold the consultation, it was going to be the Rolls Royce consultation, blah, blah, blah. And when we finally saw what was happening and it was too late and people didn't understand and the wrong people were asked. And there have been other bike consultations too. And we're talking probably about administrators long gone, so I don't know I'm offending anybody in particular. Um, the North Adelaide one, the Mar Mar say Market Street one. We found that most of the cyclists were in prospect. And, and I know obviously that, it, but the, the person you have to ask and put the weight on is a person who lives or owns a business who pays our rates. They're the people we listen to. And uh, I want to really go into this I want to be able to really use this consultation and trust it and make my decision based on it. And if it had done that on Prime Road, we would have, well, we did, and we were in a pickle. Um, so this is all, Alex is not asking for anything, that each individual councillor should be able to go to the CEO and say, I want the correspondence and materials which are provided to the interviewees. I want the questions to be put to the interviewees. I want the groupings and the weightings. These are questions we should be asking. We shouldn't have to have a motion on notice. This should be all provided. It's not secret. We're ratepayers. So um, I urge you to uh, make sure that we get it and vote for this uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I've got Councillor Hender, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Look, I support the motion, and I, I would have supported the motion as it stood, but I'll also support this motion, because really whatever it takes to get a councillor and get comfortable with the process, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, but I, I do just want to make a couple of points. Uh, the, the consultation, I totally agree, we do need to talk to the people who are most intimately affected by it. But I just want to make the point that we are also running a capital city, and like capital cities all over the world, like cities all over the world, we need to acknowledge that we need to build bicycle infrastructure. It is a worldwide trend. It's one that we should be embracing. It's one that we have embraced, indeed. Um, and that does involve us, um, at times, changing the infrastructure in the city to rebalance the way that the city works. It has been very car-centric. It needs to be adjusted to some extent. And we're talking about one street Going east, east west, one street going northwest, uh, going north south, in, in order to uh, encourage more people to use their bikes in the city. The research tells us that separated bikeways increases bike use, and um, that is something that we that we need to welcome. So I I absolutely agree. If, if Councillor Antic needs further information, and yes, I think the things that he suggested are quite sensible. Let's divide it up and see. But let's not think that the only people whose views are important here are the views of the people who operate on those streets, because we're trying to build a city for the future. And in order to have a city for the future, we need to make sure our bikes are welcomed into the city just as our cars are. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yeah, I will be supporting this motion. Um, and. Uh, the, uh, I think it's most important that we know who we're getting the answers from and, and articulating the, the, the particular groups, but also and, and the questions that are put so that they're not leading questions and that we basically get to sign off on what what is asked of people before we go to consultation. But also importantly um, that the information put out to consultation includes, you know, existing in you know, a section of road as existing, you know, satellite photograph, and then as proposed, directly side by side, so people can see exactly what's there now and, and, and how it's going to change. So people, when you go to consultation, people can actually tell what's happening, rather than just looking at a plan and not being able to, to tell the difference between what's proposed and what's there now. For example, I was speaking with a proprietor of a cafe in Flinders Street who was concerned about losing his uh, outdoor dining. But if the bikeway went on the route of, the, of his outdoor dining, it would also be taking out all of the street trees. And, and I said, well, I certainly wouldn't want to see all of the street trees chopped down 
and your uh, Del Dining, your bike door, the, 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 uh, the bike lane could be located outside that alignment, so it doesn't affect your outdoor dining or the street trees, for example. But the drawings that put out to public consultation need to be sufficiently clear so that people can, can actually tell what's going on, not just a person in picture of someone smiling on a bike. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. I'm going to go to the Deputy Lord Mayor, but the CEO, just before the Deputy Lord Mayor put her hand up, said, could you say a couple of words? So, CEO, a comment, then I go to the DLM. Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and through you, there's no doubt this project is um, likely to be complex and there is going to be a lot of interest in the project and we are going to need to balance competing interests. Um, certainly some lessons have been learnt through the Frame Street project. Uh, and we're happy to definitely respond to council members' request for clarification and more information. So there's no problem with that at all. You just need to recognise, and we all recognise that it's very difficult to consult on predetermined plans. So we really need to work out how we consult in the best way so that we get the best outcome. And it's not that easy because we don't know the solutions until we consult and we can't get to the solutions until we consult. So it's a, a cyclic sort of process. Having said that, we'll do the best we can to come back with what we intend to do to test with you to make sure you have comfort. Thank you, CEO. Deputy Lord Mayor, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I also support this. When I first read it, I thought it was very operational, but understanding um, what happened in previous times and also it's better for all of us if we have a look at that information and the questions that we put to the interviewers before than afterwards, because that's not going to be fun. Um, I also support cycling infrastructure and all, um, I believe there's up to, what, 3,000 pumps that are going to come online in the next couple of years, and many of those are without car parks, which means that we have to make sure that we are looking at um, integrated infrastructure, so cycling, pedestrianised, as well as cars, and uh, the tram's also part of that. I do wish this uh, was a simpler exercise, and I do wish some of the infrastructure was simpler, and I also, um, like to make sure that within those groupings of interviewees we talk to the users because as much as I do understand that you know the property owners and business owners and the residents are the ones uh, that we target in terms of our engagement, we have 230,000 people coming to the city on a daily basis and they come here and they spend money and they are the things that keep the city going, particularly the city, CBD and our retail. And we also need to make sure that they can access the city as easily as possible. So I'd like to make sure that we talk to them. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm going to go to Councillor Aviad. Councillor Wilkinson, you can ask a question, but you've spoken. Uh, Lord Mayor, without repeating uh, most things that have been said, um, I support the, uh, the motion. And I just want to sort of bring to the attention of members and also to administration to why, we, to some degree, have to go through this process. There is definitely no community goodwill at all. Um, I think there's been many promises by this council via elections and be it politically uh, of nature, political of nature, uh, that they have not seen yet a rectification uh, of the uh, south to north via Cranway, and most people, when you mention East West, the first thing I'll say to you is, is this is what it's going to look like. That's the first thing that jumps to their mind, and that's the issue fundamentally. Be it Sturt Street and also be it Frome. I think it was always going to be a challenging project, and it will continue to be a challenging project, but I think where success lies for us in the community is really getting that goodwill within the community um, and really trying to get the community back on board. Um, and I think this process really filters through any concerns that elected members may have, which we can also communicate with the community some of those concerns and hand on heart be able to say that we've gone through a proper consultation process, heard all our ratepayers, have all our questions answered and also their questions answered. So look, I'm looking forward to, uh, to this process, to getting everything out. I understand it's going to be difficult. I understand it needs some serious work, but I urge that we try to, as much as we can, complete the current infrastructure that's there to be able to demonstrate to our community that we have the ability and the capacity to deliver on premium, a premium product for in the way of biking infrastructure where people can be proud of and support in the future. I really do think it's make it and break it. This consultation is going to be great, but the best way we can consult is to deliver on a, an incredible outcome 
for Front Street because that is a consultation that we're making. It will demonstrate to the community that we are very capable of doing that. And I think that's that's what matters most to me in this whole process. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Aviad. Councillor Wilkinson, I can, I can allow a question but not debate. I'm aware of the protocol, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm asking a question for administration. Um, from the CEO's response, I've just got some concern that there's an intention to possibly go to consultation without actually a concept design for people to comment on. So is it intended to go to consultation with just broad you know, questions or is it intended to go to consultation with some, some design that people make comment on? Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. CEO. You through, Lord Mayor, if I can just send it through to Beth, thanks. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. The, the, the circuitous nature of it that the CEO is referring to is that if we go to consultation with a preemptive design before we consult, um, we may well have, we may well compound concerns. So what I'm, what we're proposing we, we would do is um, be going out with the design, bike design guidelines which formed a part of, were developed as a part of the, the work we're doing at the moment on Frome. So that talks about the key elements of our bike ways, and then we consult on which of those elements would be um, relevant to specific areas of the Flinders Franklin um, strip. Um, we would also be looking very closely at car parking. We'd also look very closely at outdoor dining. Um, there are two issues that are top of my mind that are very, are very topical and very dear to people's residents and business. So what are the design solutions? We have a suite of those in our bike design guidelines. We'll be using those to consult with. We'll be looking at each residence or business in terms of outdoor dining needs, in terms of greening desires, in terms of car parking, um, and, and of course traffic analysis, um, pedestrian analysis, and then we'll be able to develop a concept based on those elements and the situational issues that we, we uncover or we find out about in the consultation. I hope that clarifies, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Beth. Councillor Clarehand. Look, I'm happy to support this, but I also want to acknowledge that consultation is not yes, no, black and white. And it, from what has happened in the past and even more recently, we obviously need to have an appropriate consultation process. And it may be a multi-staged process. There are professionals out there who can advise on this. I don't believe that it's just the questions that will actually end up giving us clarity and confidence. I think it's a much more comprehensive process that is required. And I really don't think anyone would argue with that. Let's let the experts help us put together whatever it takes to get everybody, give everybody the opportunity to actually have their say. And let me also refer to um, a couple of the other statements that have been made about our role as a capital city. It is not just about the people who work and live in the streets. It is also about the customers. And those customers come from far and wide. I've just spent five days in Melbourne, Councillor Moran can tell you every other person's got a bike. I mean, that traffic congestion is horrendous there and people take to their bikes all public transport to get from A to B. And we need to be thinking ahead about these issues. We can't complain about road congestion or we can't comment about the growth in numbers of people coming into the city without thinking about how we address various issues. And obviously this will have quite a considerable level of complexity, but I believe that there are consultants out there who can actually advise council on appropriate ways to undertake staged develop uh, consultation processes that will give everybody a say and will give us the opportunity to come back 
with a decent proposal that's more palatable. Thank you, members. Before I hand you back to your mover, Councillor Antigo, I'll briefly talk. Quite clearly, members, the trust bank has been depleted via, as a result of a, a multitude of legacy issues associated with these projects. Uh, but I think other than taking a very detailed and thorough approach to the consultation as suggested by Councillor Antic, which I do support, but there will be another way, members, which will restore the trust bank on these projects, is us delivering, and us delivering on the north-south at the highest possible quality to build a product, to build an outcome that's not only safe for cyclists, but it works for property owners, it welcomes businesses, it doesn't threaten motorists, it's good for pedestrians, and it greens our city streets. The only way this will get rectified, members, is through our actions. So I do look forward to standing with you in December on Frome Street for the unveiling of the first block, with Councillor Antic riding past us all waving. And that's, I believe, how we will restore the trust bank of the community. We've got to do it, and we've got to do it well. And I have confidence we will do that, members. Councillor Antic, to you to sum up on your motion. Traffic flows. I will drive past you and wave, um, <laughs> but clearly it won't. So um, now there's so many things we can talk about, um, including but not limited to um, oh, where do we start? Anyway, uh, you know. Okay. Well, well I'll, I'll sum it up, but I, but I'll just need to point out a couple of things about the consultation. Um, I think it was suggested earlier on that that we're unhappy with it or that it didn't fall into line with my opinion. Um, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I was surprised by it in the previous case. So, and I think anyone who had done that consultation in its form with a door knocking exercise would have been. So uh, certainly not suggesting um, anything else other than simply it was probably looking back on it as incumbent upon us uh, as a council to stipulate what we wanted. You know, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, it's certainly no more or less than that. I don't want to for a minute suggest that, um, you know, that, that you know, there weren't answers that were given. They were. I mean, clearly those people were responding as they were asked. So that's just want to make that point. Um, secondly, um, I, we're going to get to the, the merits of it at some point, and uh, uh, we're certainly going to do that um, because I don't share any of the confidence about the rollout of Frame Street. Uh, I'm sorry to say I don't. Um, and the reason for that is that as long as people on that stretch of road east west are hit with the facts that it is going to cut their parking down, that it is going to take their way their outdoor dining, and that it is going to reduce the flow of traffic, which I think we can safely say the new Frome Street will do. Um, it may well be a better design, it may well be a lovely design, but and we may well be a capital city Lord Mayor, but we only heard earlier on uh, this evening uh, about how important the residents of North Adelaide quite rightly were in their in flying in the face of uh, visitors to the Adelaide Oval. We are a capital city. Um, of course, there does appear to be some conflict in that approach because now we are doing the opposite. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we'll just take that as noted. Anyway, um, I look forward to hearing what the people of Zurich have to say about this project. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll no doubt be inundated with, uh, with emails from uh, Copenhagen and other places, which is always interesting. So why not? Let's move on. and. Uh, uh, guten Tag, Lord Mayor. Guten Tag. Danke. Danke. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Yeah. Those against? Motion carried. Members, we have many items to consider. I'm going to keep this, moving, this meeting moving. Can I take you, members, directly, please, to item 7, 7 to approve, page 84 of your papers. Councillor Abiyad, you're moving? Lord Mayor, I'm suggesting that we move a few items on block. I can see them here. That there won't be. Councillor, I was going to look at the strategic alignment corporate activities items. There are five of them. I was going to move them all on block. I think you should block. do 7.7 .7 all the way through. I could do this, Councillor. So, what I'll do, members, in the interest of your time, is that I will look to item 7.7 .7 right through to 7.13, and I'd like you to tell me which items you'd like to, to set aside. Councillor Wilkinson? 7.7, .7, please. 7.7. Thank you. 7.7 .7 is set aside. Councillor Aviard? 7.12. 7.12 set aside. 7.8. 7.8 DLM. Any others, members? There aren't. So what I'm going to do, members, is I'm going to say items 7.9, 7.10, 7.11, 7.12, 7.13, 7.14, 7.15, 7.16, 7.17, 7.18, 7.19, 7.20, 7.21, 7.22, 7.23, 7.24, 7.25, 7.26, 7.27, 7.
7.11 and 7.13. We're going to move on block and I look for a mover. Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Abiyad. No debate, members. I put this to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We carry those items on block. I'll now turn your attention now back to item 7.7 .7 to approve page 84. Who would like to move that? Councillor Wilkinson. A bit of variation uh, if you could just please verbalise what you're looking to achieve first, and uh, we will then shape up some wording look for a seconder. Uh, there are two outcomes which I'm looking to achieve for the uh, North Terrace west of King William Street. The first one is that um, we, uh, the city block side of North Terrace, be be paved per the design palette in Mintaro slate flagstones, not per the northern side of North Terrace, because there's um, reference on page 87 to the material palette being taken from the northern side of North Terrace. I was actually at that briefing and specifically asked about that southern side so that it's consistent, so that the slate, the entire slate well, paving... Councillor, Councillor, just I'll stop you there. Yes, so I'm going, aspect. what other items, and then we can shape up your wording and I will look for a seconder. So uh, what other items are you looking to... Um, and that these trees in the street be planted in the ground, not in planted tubs. Certainly. Okay. So is that it, Councillor? Yes. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you've got a recommendation with item one, we put in an item two and an item three. Yep. So could you please verbalise your item two with regards to the paving material you just stated? Uh, in the most paving, succinct way possible. That the paving on the city side of North Terrace. If you just read that slowly because it's being written down. That the paving on the city block side of North Terrace be Mintaro slate flagstones. <laughs> okay, I'll stop you there. You've got that, Rachel? Okay, thank you, Councillor. That's for material consistency with King William Street. Certainly. And point three. the second point is that the uh, plane trees be planted in the ground, not in pots, so that they can grow to a big size. Okay, we'll just wait till we've got that recorded and then I'll look to see whether you have a seconder for the purpose of the debate. Okay, Rachel, you've got that with regarding the plane trees? Okay, Councillor Martin, had a hand up. You have a second to the floor. Is yours to debate? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I take a great interest in the uh, public realm, as, as we all do, but um, uh, we've been looking to um, uh, have the Mintaro Slate flagstones as a um, ceremonial street um, footpath. I've had numerous discussions with council staff about the differentiation between the city block side of North Terrace and the parkland side of North Terrace. Because it's a terrace, there's validity in having um, a city block material on the city block side and a different material on the uh, on the parkland or the institutional district side. Um, and uh, where um, the uh, footpath meets with King William Street, where we have Mintaro Slate, uh, it then would be uh, Mintaro Slate, Slate, matching Mintaro Slate, and that's a historical South Australian material that's uh, um, based on historically what we had and uh, would be timeless and uh, and a South Australian local material that's quintessentially South Australian. Um, uh, and uh, then on the trees, um, I um, understand that the trees in pots was uh, possibly done as a temporary measure outside the new enormous university buildings, but trees planted in planter tubs can only ever get to a limited size. You know, they're, they're limited by the size that the root ball can expand to in an above ground pot. And in a wide boulevard like uh, North Terrace, you want plane trees growing to their full height not limited because they've been planted in, in planter boxes. Um, so I want to see you know, 40 foot you know, plane trees, not, not 10 foot plane trees because they're limited to being in a tub on a 40 foot wide street. So um, uh, that's the, uh, the endeavour there.
So, Council, I'm going to go to your seconder, but just for the benefit of yourself and your fellow elected members, and just please nod if uh, what I'm saying is consistent with what you're looking to achieve here. You have just stated that for the section of the footpath from King William Street down to what effectively would be West Terrace, yeah. uh, on the city side, which is the southern side of King William Street, you're looking for a Mintaro slate finish, and you're looking for the trees on that side of the street to be set into the footpath. That's correct? On both, on both sides. Thank you. As long no, as you're all clear, members, no. understand. Councillor Martin, you second it. Oh, Lord Mayor, look, it needs uh, no embellishment. I just uh, thank Councillor Wilkinson again for his eye to detail. Uh, I acknowledge that uh, this is a, uh, a project that's being run by the North West City Coordinating Group, which is a committee formed by the Riverbank Authority, and therefore our influence is somewhat limited. But uh, I think uh, uh, Councillor Wilkinson's motion is well intentioned and well aimed. Members, I'm looking to you. Councillor Fairhan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'd like to just ask some questions of administration. On page 87, for example, it talks about uh, the concept design brief is of being a joint project of the City of Adelaide, Renewal SA and the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. And it's overseen by a Northwest Coordinating Group, which is a subsidiary of the Riverbank Authority. And yet it covers an area between Benithan Park. If you have a look at paragraph seven, it covers an area um, of Curry Street, West Terrace, Benithan Park, and the northern bank of the River Torrens and Morford Street. And this group is actually calling, is the one that's actually going to be deciding on the on the brief on the brief and calling for expressions of interest. And I, I just am surprised that a non-elected group is actually making decisions and a subset of the Riverbank Authority is making decisions about our public realm as far back as Curry Street, uh, West Terrace and Morford Street. And I just want to know who who is representing council and how come the Riverbank Authority is actually making decisions about this when most of it is, is actually council's domain? Thank you, Councillor Clarenham. CEO, can you clarify that for the members, please? <laughs> yes, I'll ask Beth to clarify that, thanks. Uh, thank you. Through your, you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Clarenham, I, I fully understand what you're saying, and, and when we discussed this at committee recently, um, what we clarified there was that this project comes out of the Capital City Development Program. So Capital City Committee, their development program, this is a project from there. The, um, the comment in item seven should probably have been expanded, you're quite right, that this, the representatives from Renewal SA will go back to the Riverbank Authority, just as the representatives from the City of Adelaide will come back from, to council. Um, and there's representatives from DIPTI, and all of those recommendations will ultimately go back to Capital City Committee. So completely agree that that's an omission. We should have expanded that governance arrangement more fully, um, but it certainly is a, um, an approach between City of Adelaide and the State Government, with the specific agencies being Renewal SA and DIPTI, but Renewal SA have Riverbank Authority as part of their governance. Does that answer your question, Councillor Clarion? Well, it does, but I still think that the Riverbank Authority has no authority when it comes to our capital city projects. And for them to, for this working group to fall under the Riverbank Authority, I think is an offence to Council. And I think we're stupid if we accept that hierarchy. I know, I know that you've put forward an explanation. I mean, we'll be paying half in many instances, and yet they've got two other partners from state government and a Riverbank Authority making decisions. I mean, hello, what's going on here? Um, and I, so I've got major concerns with this structure. They're even calling for the expression of interest. Council's not doing it, the capital city's not doing it. But the Riverbank Authority with its working group is doing it. And to me, I think that is pretty bizarre. 
And just one other point, um, I did notice um, at our briefing sessions there was a lot of discussion about access to the riverbank and that has not been picked up in any of the, um, the brief guidelines and I'm just wondering is it included somewhere where we haven't seen it, will it be included in, the, in more detail? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, just, just to be really, really clear, um, the Riverbank Authority will not be the sole decision-making body in this project. Um, City of Adelaide is releasing the concept the um, concept plan brief and we'll be doing that in the next few days. And an amendment that we will be making is just as you just said, Councillor Clearahan, and I think Councillor Hendry, you've also raised in terms of Riverbank and Riverbank access. So um, if I could, Lord Mayor, just to recap, the Capital City Committee Initiative. Within that, City of Adelaide is leading the concept brief. We'll be issuing the um, tender for that in the next few days once we finalise after feedback from you tonight. The, I guess the governance then would be that Riverbank Authority would be informed just as you will all be informed and it's a shared decision making. So I really do need to, to underline that, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hedda. I'm uncomfortable with just about every aspect of this, I have to say, having um, uh, with Councillor Clarehan um, just <coughs> raising that issue. Could we just get some clarity again? I'm sorry. How is the Riverbank Authority involved at all? Could, there, could we just understand that? Because I just don't understand how <coughs> the Riverbank Authority has any involvement in North Terrace? CEO. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. The um, part of the, the precinct does come within the Riverbank Authority's um, purvey. So, yeah, part of it does. So, in terms of um, Renewal SA as one of the partners, projects which come within the, the Riverbank area do um, are reported to them as part of their governance. But I have to underline again, it's not the only governance. So um, the Riverbank Authority's boundaries come right up to North Terrace? That's correct, Councillor, through you, Lord Mayor. Okay, well, thank you for that clarification. Um, can I just make a couple of comments? Um, first of all, I wonder if I could ask the mover whether he'd be prepared to have it taken in parts. Councillor Wilkinson. Yes. You will? Thank you. Okay. Look, um, a, a couple of issues. Firstly, um, to pick up um, one of the comments of Councillor Carahan, I had some conversations with administration today. Uh, there were two things that I um, raised when, when this was discussed at committee. One of them was um, that we make sure that uh, any work that we do here includes access through to the riverbank. And the other is that um, any work that we do on west end of North Terrace accommodates bikes because as I understand it they haven't been well accommodated in some other parts of it. So I'm uh, rather than um, suggest an amendment given that the complications of us already having some amendments I'm just wondering whether I could get an undertaking from the administration, an official undertaking from the administration that those two issues will be picked up. Happy to take that on board Councillor. Thank you very much. Um, as to the, um, the the motion as currently put, I, I, I again I have this difficulty, and I have to say I have this difficulty often with Councillor Wilkinson's um, uh, motions. Not because I don't totally agree with the outcome that he's seeking to achieve, because I know he's got a fantastic design eye, and I know that, that this is what we're after. But I also think that what we're doing is we're putting this out for concept, and we're saying to our to the concept people, we'd like you to take into account some things. The first thing we'd like you to take into account is our Adelaide Design Manual that tells you what bits of pavers to use in what place, what palette to be applied where. That's exactly what our Design Manual is intended to do. And it's intended to do it not just for North Terrace, but for all over the city. And that's what I want our concept people to have a look at. 
And I'm hoping what it says in there is that Mintaro State, I suspect that's what it says in there is Mintaro State, but I want them to look at that. That's what I want them to take into account when they're doing the design. The other thing I'd like them to take into account, and this is to Councillor Moran's point from last, uh, last time we spoke about this, I'd like them to take into account the very detailed planning that was done last time we looked at North Terrace and say, here it is, the plan's pretty much all done. Don't reinvent the wheel, just update it. And that plan, as I understand it, have provided a really coherent and cohesive um, pathway right along North Terrace. The whole idea was, that it was to bring North Terrace into, into one, you know, one look, basically. So those are the two things that I want, them to, want the um, concept plans to take into account. They are the things that we're looking at at a strategic level, they are the things that we're looking at at a city-wide level, and rather than do these by piece planning, where we're imposing particular views, I would like us to do this in a way that actually looks at it in a in a more comprehensive way and then applying it across the city wherever it should be applied. I suspect the outcome will be the same. I mean, that no one is going to come back with a concept plan that doesn't plant trees in the ground where it's possible to plant trees in the ground. Obviously, that makes absolute sense to do it. And the bigger the tree, the more important it is that they go on the ground. And I'm very much hoping they come back with a plan that has Mintaro's fate. But I want them to look at the documents we've asked them to look at and to use that to guide their concept plan and to bring it back to us. And of course, we'll get a chance to have a look at it when it comes back. Thank you, Councillor Hander. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I, and to pick up on uh, Councillor Hender's point, I do note that the Adelaide Design Manual is in the reference document, but I guess what we're asking is that it's strengthened in terms of that has to be a key reference and used. Um, I also wasn't aware that the uh, North West City Coordinating Group was a subcommittee as a Riverbank Authority. So my question goes to number 18. Uh, in this, which says elected members will have an opportunity to provide feedback. Uh, my question is who approves the uh, concept design once we've provided feedback? What's the process once that concept design comes in? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I'd just like to acknowledge again that um, paragraph seven um, should have been worded differently. So in terms of renewal SA, reporting through to Riverbank Authority, yes. But the Northwest City Coordinating Group also has myself and Daniel on as representatives and we'll come back here. The, the undertaking, if, if I could, um, a CEO, is that we will come back to Council with greater clarity around the decision making. Um, for this project. So, uh, apologies, just to be clear, so it, it is not a subcommittee of the Riverbank Authority? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. I'd rather come back with absolute clarity, Councillor, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, um, but again I stress we're managing the um, tender. Um, it's uh, equal representatives from the three agencies and we will ensure that we come back with greater clarity around the joint decision-making model. Now, members, before I hand you back to your mover, I'm just listening to this debate. The, we look at the NWCCG, we've got Renewal SA, State Government, DIPTI, City of Adelaide. How many chefs does it take to build a footpath, is what I'm thinking. Um, as long as the City Council um, has got a high degree of control over this project, I think that's the message that's coming back here, is that, I mean, this is an important project, but not the biggest one this council or the state government will ever embark upon. It just seems like there are so many chefs in this kitchen, it's getting ridiculous. Now, can I go back to the mover, Councillor Wilkinson? This is gathered you're to sum up. Would you like your motion to be re-read out? Uh, no, I think definitely. Everyone's clear on it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, sorry? Um, you would like it read out? You would. So we'll just do that because we don't have screens, sure. Councillor Wilkinson. So Rachel, if you can please read out the motion, then you sum up, then we'll vote in parts, Councillor Wilkinson. That Council 1 approves the North Terrace West concept design brief shown as attachment A to item 7.7 .7 on the agenda for the meeting of Council held on 14th November 2017, subject to 1.1, that the paving on the city block side of North Terrace be 
Mintaro slate flagstone. Yep. And 1.2, that the plain trees be planted in the ground, not in planter boxes on both sides of North Terrace. Yes. Okay, Councillor, you're summing up on your motion. Um, I've been uh, in discussion with our administration about our design manual, as Councillor Hender. We've been looking to refine and improve upon our design manual. Um, there's some inconsistency between what's in the design manual and, and what's referenced in the, uh, in the, in the reports. So on page 87, it makes reference to the existing pallet on the northern side of North Terrace. Um, yet what's in the design manual for the ceremonial streets, being King William Street and North Terrace, is Mentaro Slate. And, and the refinement that, that we've been looking at doing is just going from the diamond pattern Mentaro slate, which is a very 1980s thing, um, to the traditional Mentaro slate flagstones, which historically was, was what was laid. We have a flagstone pattern on the other side of North Terrace. Um, so it's a quintessential South Australian material, but laid in the historic way rather than the 1980s way of doing it. If the doc, if without this motion, it refers back to the design manual, you could then see more the diamond pattern um, Mintaro slate being laid, which is what I'm trying to avoid because we're trying to move on from that. Um, uh, also, we're wanting to have a material consistency between the two ceremonial streets, being King William Street and North Terrace on the city block side. So when you get to the corner of King William Street and, and North Terrace, you've actually got Mintaro Slate joining Mintaro Slate, not, not going to some other material based on the other side of North Terrace. So um, uh, that's where I'm going. So it's something that is timeless, quintessentially South Australian, and um, will we'll stand for all time and look good. Um, and then on the trees, uh, one of the trees, regardless of the type of the tree, we saw in a plant box actually blew over because it had a root ball in the little box. You know, I mean, that's sort of proof of the pudding of why that, and, and I understand it's so cheaper to put a tree in a box than, than to actually you know, to, to plant it in when you've got service and stuff like that. But uh, on a street like that, the rest of North Terrace, we had street trees planted in the ground, not, not in the plant box. And I just want to make sure that, that uh, we um, have trees properly planted in the ground. Members, we're going to take this matter in three parts. The first is to approve the brief. Those in favour? Those against? The second is 1.1, which is to deal with the surfacing, in this case the Mintaro slate. Those in favour? Hands up please, members. Those against, so that is carried. A third is the trees, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Members, that means that item 7.7 .7 is dealt with. I take you on to item 7.8, summer event season. DLM, you put that in the parking lot. Would you like to address that matter? You effectively have a recommendation to approve. Thank you, I'd like to move as printed and see if you say anything. Councillor Moran. Thank you. Um, really what I'd like to do is uh, thank admin. While it doesn't quite go as far as I had hoped, uh, they have taken in consideration things like tram works, the I-Barn and the bike lanes, the uh, bike works that are happening. Um, so I sort of hope that this is stage one and then we can bring it back in again yeah. after the uh, festival season. And I'd just really like to thank uh, Noni and her team for the work because it's an excellent outcome. Thank you. Thank you, DLM. Councillor Moran. Members to the floor. DLM, back to you. Nothing. Members to the floor, those in favour? <coughs> those against, we carry item 7.7. .7. The third item, members, was item 7.12, 7 7.12. Now, members, I'm going to need a procedural motion for that first of all. So, Councillor Clarehan, are you moving a procedural motion before I ask? Yes, seconded by Councillor Moran. Do I have any debate about the procedural motion? I don't, so I move that to you. Those in favour? Those against? I now need nominations. Yes. Councillor Moran? Oh, Councillor Clarehan? Yes, uh, Lord Sorry. Mayor, I uh, would like to nominate Councillor Corbell 
to replace me on the Study Adelaide Board. Given her teaching background, I think she'd make an excellent candidate. Thank you, and I will note, members, that Councillor Abia did bring this matter up, so thank you for your patience, Councillor. I understand. Uh, Councillor Corbell, do you accept as nominated? I accept, Lord Mayor. You do. So, members, do I have any debates about that? There is no pecuniary interest on this matter, so Councillor Corbell can stay in the chamber. You can discuss it. Don't. Summing up, Councillor? Summing up. Members? Sorry. Oh, I need a mover and a seconder. There you are. I'm going to take a mover with... Done. Councillor Aviad, you're moving this. Pop your hand up. I'm not moving it, Councillor. That was the procedural motion. No, no. no I, oh, well, I nominated, so yes, you Okay. Moving. So you're moving? Yeah. Councillor Aviad, you're seconding. Well done. So, members, I now, I now put this before you. Those in favour? <laughs> Councillor Corbell is smiling. We've passed that matter. Congratulations, Councillor Corbell. We move on. And did you want to thank me for all those years that I've sat on that board, Lord? Yes. Without any pain. Yes. Now, members, can you please give Councillor Clarehan a warm round of applause for her service to the city of <laughs> CEO, bring out the gifts, the flowers, the brass band. Thank you, Councillor Clarahan, greatly appreciate it. And Study Adelaide, of course, does wonderful work. That, of course, should always be noted very important to the entire fabric of our great city. Have I said enough, Councillor Clarahan? Have I made yeah, good? Thank you. <laughs> Members, I take you on, because that now means that all items with a seven in front of them are now dealt with. So we go to questions on notice of which we have nil. Do I have any questions without notice, members? I don't, so I'll get Councillor Wilkinson. You just made it. Uh, just wondering about the status of the uplighting of St Peter's Cathedral. I could sense that was coming. <laughs> See you. Do it tomorrow. Um, through you, Lord Mayor, I'm not personally aware. Beth, could I just ask you, are you aware of the uplighting status of St Peter's Cathedral? You're all in the dark, aren't you? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the work has been left, so that the tender has gone out, um, and we'll come back, I'd suggest, through E News with the exact date, unless Clinton can give me a ETA. No, okay. No, certainly the work's been specified, the tent has gone out, and um, it will happen in the near future. We'll come back with the exact date. Councillor Clinton's racing game there with torch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Members, no further questions without notice. I don't see any hands. I'm going to keep you moving. We move on to motions on notice 10.1, Councillor Antic, page 277. Councillor Antic, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I move as a which benefit of... Councillor Moran, hand up first. You have a second. The floor is yours for okay. debate. So my motion is... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a break. That's as good you like this. Uh, you will like this. Okay, so um, this motion, Lord Mayor, um, was predicated uh, after a visit to our fair city from Geoffrey Robertson, QC, which we're all eternally grateful. Um, during that lecture, he said, this was in relation to the statue of, our beloved statue of Colonel White, uh, Lord Mayor, which of course is a lovely piece of artwork. Um, and he said as follows, in front of apparently a crowd, um, uh, no, I think it should go. He's a thief, he's a thief. He repeated that, in case you missed it. He robbed the Aborigines of the right to land. It's beautiful. If it's beautiful, it's a good architectural one. This is my writing, I can't read. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> then putting it should add to the description that the man stole the land of the Aborigines. Uh, that's the historical fact, right? So this is this man has come in and made this amber and historically inaccurate fact in our city. Um, I went and did a bit of research actually, and um, it turns out he got a Bachelor of Civil Law from the University of Oxford, where it appears Australian history is not uh, on the current curriculum or that of the 1960s, it would seem, because that is just uh, an outrageous thing for someone to turn up at our city and say. But it highlighted the point, Lord Mayor, to me, 
that um, this is a very trendy thing at the moment in the US in particular. We've said a lot of this. Um, this kind of cultural revisionism uh, whereby um, people will, will, will turn up to a city, point the finger at pretty much everyone, just you know, like the days of McCarthyism, uh, and, uh, and suggest that whatever deeds they've reconstructed uh, should be uh, burned from our collective psyche uh, by virtue of tearing down statues. I mean, this is the sort of stuff that um, Stalinists used to do. It's, a, uh, it's, it's nothing more than rewriting history. We see this all the time. And, and it really did highlight the point to me, Lord Mayor, that it was an opportunity for us uh, as a council to affirm uh, our belief that these statues have cultural purpose, they have significant historical purpose, and that they are without doubt valuable and valued by the community in general. And I, and I thought as a, as a reason for doing this then that we could extend that and extend the invitation to this brave state government um, who, who never ever jump on a trendy bandwagon, Lord Mayor, uh, to, um, to uh, take an opportunity to, uh, to, to introduce legislation to do the same. Now, I've taken some advice from uh, uh, Shani Ditter, who was very helpful and very thorough, and I'm told from her information that some of these protections already exist through heritage, <coughs> and that's sort of thing. So I accept that, and that the motion has been predicated on the basis of that information. But from my point of view, it would be a crying shame if at some point now or in the future, one of these statues or its inscription was changed to justify the social justice conscience of some fly-in who decided that they wanted to have a say about our culture and our history. So uh, I want this council to make a statement and to affirm those statues as they currently are, not particularly just Colonel Light, but all of them because they all have a purpose, they all have a reason, and they all have a, uh, a place in our society. So I ask you to support that, and, uh, and I also ask that we, that we uh, ask the state government to do the same, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mayor, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Yes, I can only assume that um, uh, Robertson was being uh, tongue-in-cheek but it has highlighted something that is um, you know, a danger to statues around the world. Our situation is nowhere like uh, South Amer South Southern American states where they've had a civil war um, and uh, I'm sure Colonel Light wasn't guilty of that well, uh, as to what Mr Robertson has accused him of. Um, I enjoyed his uh, hypothetical programs, but they were just hypothetical and perhaps as this. And now Kathy Betty, which I think was the better half of that relationship, has left him. He's obviously gone a bit loopy. If we had uh, Hitler in a, a statue of Hitler or something like that, obviously they wouldn't be still there. But uh, we have very um, historical um, figures of more explorer town planning and so forth. So I think it's. Um, I think Alex is being over careful, but I do appreciate that um, you know maybe in the future um, there might be a miss. At it. Well, I'm surprised that Jeffrey Robertson said that. So I wouldn't have thought that our statues were anywhere near in danger of being um, interpreted that way. So I'm happy to reinforce what is already in our um, in our heritage um, protection. But I think at this stage it should be reinforced. And I appreciate this motion. <coughs> Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I do recall when we were going through the uh, Victoria Square uh, design that the designer for Victoria Square came up with an idea to take all of the statues off their pedestals and put them around in a circle having a conversation. So, you know, things can come of statues, uh, um, but, you know, that was earnestly being put forward by the, <laughs> by the designer as an idea. So, you know, this, this, this motion would, would protect against that sort of thing. And Mr. Drive, any further debate? Councillor Martin. Yeah, Lord Mayor, look, uh, unlike the motions of uh, Councillor Antic, I don't place any store in what uh, Geoffrey Robertson says, and uh, e even less in, uh, in Cathy's articles in the Advertiser, and I apologise to the Advertiser for the, uh, the criticism. But um, I don't accept the premise that community attitudes and standards are constant. They change from generation to generation. Um, community opinion is constantly evolving. Uh, and I was uh, reading in the Weekend Australian only a few weeks ago, for example, that art galleries have uh, reassessed the work of a particular artist um, following posthumous revelations that he was undeniably a pedophile. 
and it was the judgment of galleries that the paintings that they were hanging in their in their galleries uh, were often of his victims. And so uh, the galleries took them down. Now, with this sort of motion on the books, um, it, it would have been impossible for galleries to behave in that way and respond to what I think was a, a, a good call uh, uh, that would have offended a great majority of Australians. Um, that's just what, one example of how community attitudes change. But additionally, and I think this goes some way to uh, uh, what Councillor Antic is saying, um, there is a move afoot within the community to adjust our attitudes, particularly to things like European settlement. And there is a view in some places that statues of Captain Cook saying discovered Australia is inappropriate and offensive to first Australians. In those circumstances, I can see that this debate, which is already going on in the community, may well evolve into some other solution uh, determined by other generations that will uh, go some way to address the concerns of First Australians. Uh, I don't think it is actually up to this council to be, uh, uh, and I, I pardon the pun, setting in stone uh, statues and inscriptions for all time. Uh, that will be a matter that councils to come, governments to come will deal with. Uh, I think our place at this time is to ensure that those monuments, those memorials within the city that we value at this time are maintained and cared for in the manner that the administration has detailed in this report. Um, so uh, I reluctantly I won't be able to support this. Uh, Councillor Antic talks great sense uh, a lot of the time, but uh, I'm not in agreement. <laughs> Councillor Hannon. I actually was going to support this until I heard Councillor Hannon's explanation for why he was putting it forward. <laughs> and, I, and, then I, and I won't support it for the reasons that, uh, that Councillor Martin said. I also agree that, um, and, I, and I have to say, I don't think it's a pressing matter. I, I don't think many of our sceptics are under, uh, under current threat. I don't think there's coming back. <laughs> well, I think the fact that nobody actually cared what Geoffrey Robertson had to say about it is a bit of an indicator. Um, I, I, we, we do have to remember that South Australia had letter, letters patent that, um, that insisted, or at least sought to insist, that when we settled this land, uh, that we paid respect to the traditional owners of the land. That was there in the original, originating documents. Uh, and so we we have settled this land in South Australia in a slightly different way than other parts of the country have been settled, and that's something to be proud of. I, I don't think that there's um, at the moment any of our our um, uh, statues are under threat. But I, like Councillor um, Martin, I have to um, I have to acknowledge that community attitudes might change in the future. People might take a different view to it, and I, I don't want to be necessarily pre prejudging that view. So I'm happy to leave them as they are. I think they're being well looked after. Uh, I don't. I think if, they, if it becomes an issue, we can address the issue when it becomes a current issue. I don't think we need to be preemptive here, um, and I, I think we, we ought to be um, uh, able to uh, to deal with that if and when it happens. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Clarehan, followed by Councillor Corbell. Councillor Clarehan? Yes. Um, look, I'm, as you know, very concerned, of, well, an admirer of much of our um, cultural history and the statues that um, we have in our city. Um, but it really worries me that we would hand over control of what happens to our um, statues and memorials to the state government when they're actually our responsibility. Um, I think that would be, you just don't need to go that far. And um, I think that um, as has been already mentioned, community and cultural values are dynamic. They actually change. Um, and I'm, I'm not aware of any um, destruction in South Australia of any of our statues. Oh, we did lose the plaque on Colonel William Light um, because someone thought it would be great value to melt down or toss in a container and send off to China for scrap metal. Um, so, you know, we have dealt with those issues. I don't have an issue with the addition of a plaque uh, that would uh, interpret uh, the significance or the history uh, in a contemporary way. Uh, I think we were all big enough and, and uh, sensible enough to be able to accept 
uh, multiple and varied or diverse views about what has happened to us in history, and especially uh, when it comes to democracy. I mean, it's the most reliable platform we've got. We do hand the baton on, but I say keep it with Adelaide City Council. Don't hand it over to the state government. I mean, we are again responsible for the upkeep, maintenance, placement, etc., of our statutes. I mean, we didn't kick and scream. No one kicked and screamed when uh, the statue, or should I say, the vision of Colonel William Light was blinded by the stadium, uh, the Adelaide Oval. Nobody kicked and screamed there. Um, so I think we're just, you know, probably overreacting to this. Uh, in some instances where I know statues have been pulled down, I probably would have given them a hand myself, especially when, it, when I was in Nicaragua and uh, the community had pulled down the statue of, of Somoza for his, um, in response to his crimes against humanity. I mean, you know, these things happen. So I say just cool our jets and let's back off. Councillor Corbell. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm aware that there's a facility um, that the City of Adelaide uses to um, store the, um, pieces of public art um, which haven't been, which are no longer in the public realm, things like fountains and statues and things. So we already have a myriad of um, pieces which used to be in our public realm which are no longer in our public realm because we don't have suitable locations for them. Um, I'm wondering if the administration can provide us with a, an update on what would what would this mean for those pieces in terms of their preservation because they are pieces they're just no longer on display. See, you. yeah, three a little meal. This this motion talks about protection, um, and so any any such. Um, pieces that we would store, we would look after within our council facility. So. Thank you. Okay, well look, I, I mean, if we've got the flexibility to be able to put more pieces, should we need to, into our storage facility, and that fits the definition of looking after them and protecting them, then I don't have an issue really with supporting this because I don't like the idea of being boxed in. Um, and keeping the status quo. If we need to move something or we need to make a change, I think we should be able to do that. Um, and if, if, we, if we consider that we can make some of those changes and put items in our storage facility and they're still protected, then I'm happy to support this. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Corbell. So members, do I have any further debate? I'm going to hand you back to your mover, and your mover is Councillor Ante. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I won't take up any more of our time. I know we've got new and better things to move on to, as always, in this chamber. But, uh, it might well be that uh, there's been an exciting TED talk that's gone on. Someone's come up with an exciting theory about revisionist history or, you know, some sort of, you know, something that's happened recently that we might want to jump on board. So I won't waste our time. Uh, it is disappointing, though, to hear that there are so many um, members in this chamber that are so um, uh, so dismissive of the important cultural institutions. Um, I personally take the view that most of uh, that which has been put, this concept of changing community ideals, and, um, you know, shifting platform is precisely the reason why these monuments do need protection. These uh, are important monuments. We're not, as Councillor Moran said, talking about despots and uh, Dictators. We're talking about Colonel William Light, good Colonel, Lord Mayor, who uh, has not offended anyone and is unlikely to ever be interpreted as a pedophile, um, as uh, we have suggested. Uh, I think that is so ludicrous and so laughable, and uh, as a basis to reject this opportunity to um, uh, to protect our statues and our institutions and depart them once again to our historical hist uh, historical uh, lineage would be would be a desperate shame. I mean, this this all this motion tries to do is say to the community at large, uh, we value these items. These are not uh, putting aside the argument that even people of history who have done bad things uh, stand as a reminder to those deeds of which they did. Um, so there is, of course, always an argument for keeping history as it is, not brushing the slate clean and trying to pretend things didn't happen if they were bad, whatever it may be. Those arguments are all to be prosecuted for another day, but 
Uh, certainly, I would urge members to support this, and uh, we are, as Councillor Wilkinson quite rightly pointed out during the week on his Facebook page, which I recommend to everyone, uh, so he does highlight some uh, appalling destruction of his heritage. We are seeing more and more of that around the city, and this is one further opportunity for the people in this chamber to rubber stamp history as being important and not to be meddled with by current trends or TED Talks or some internet trend, you know. There are no Confederate generals in this state. Rest assured, we're in good hands. We were freely settled. So uh, let's stop the hysteria. Let's rubber stamp this and move on. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Members, can I see your hands, please? Those against? The motion carries. Members, I now take you on to the second uh, motion of notice this evening, Councillor Anne Moran, item 10.2. Councillor Moran. Um, Lord Mayor, if I might just interrupt, I have to declare an interest because I sit on the board of the festival tonight. Thank you for advising your fellow members, Councillor Hender. Thank you. I'm Councillor Moran, no further speak. conflicts, members? No. So, Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. I move uh, motion on notice that the Council executes the termination clause pursuant to section 6 of the Adelaide Festival Pontoon Lease agreement if the lessee fails to complete the pontoon beautification as defined under section 3.2 of Annex 8, special conditions of the same lease, da da da. I get a second. Members, I look to the floor. Councillor Antic, you're seconding. Councillor Moran, back to you. Now, I don't expect this motion to get up, but I think that it should, I think it should get up. Um, I have not met one person that um, thinks that the pontoon is either a good idea or it's possible to be beautified or or, um, or used properly. It has no um, plumbing. Toilets will have to just lie in the river bank. It has no electricity. Generators have to be put on the bank. Um, I don't expect this to be debated fully. I think we've all uh, made our views very clear. It was a mistake and we seem to be just throwing mistake after mistake after mistake. I think it would have been a viable proposition if the pontoon, I don't even know why we call it a pontoon really, was flush with the river bank and was just an extension that you could walk onto. But it's actually six, five or six feet proud of the waterline. It's listing slightly to the left. Um, and the poor poor people are valiantly trying to um, put a put a uh, tutu on this white elephant. Um, but it's, and the, the times just keep pushing forward. Now I hear it's 30th of November. Um, I understand the, the sympathy and kindness that you extend towards the Festival of Arts, a much loved festival, and I don't really want to sit here to be to listen to that told to me that I'm a bad person and I want to get this out. It was a dog of a venue. It looked like a big waverless tent on a big concrete block with 10 gallon drums incorporated to it. It, it uh, didn't fulfil the beautiful picture that we were shown, and I'm sure the festival people were just as disappointed as we were when we saw it. Um, I think to, we offered, I moved a motion re, uh, recently that was rejected, um, hence I know this one will be too, that we offer to help pay for the removal. Um, the beautification is $150,000, which, uh, which I seem to remember was about the cost of taking it out, which is a lot more than the, the festival people thought at the beginning. Um, as I said, I think that um, the council should consider asking them to um, pull it out. The, the lease arrangement is broken. We've had two extensions, um, but I do understand. I do, and I don't certainly don't criticise the sympathies towards the, the Adelaide Festival of Arts in what's keeping this going. But sometimes, to be kind, you're actually being cruel. And um, I think history will show us that if by by allowing this to stay. Um, and have so much money poured into it, which really won't work, um, that we are actually being unkind to the Festival of Arts by not forcing them to face the reality that the people... I have not met anybody that thinks it's, uh, it's, it can be beautiful. I haven't met anybody that thinks it shouldn't be taken out of the river. Um, I'm sure I'll hear a few tonight. But the vast majority of people think it's awful. The government spent an unbelievable amount of money um, building footbridges and uh, convention centres and lovely ovals and yada yada. And yeah, what do you see when you look down there? I don't think this can be beautified to any um, great extent. But as I said, I felt I needed to put this up. I didn't really think it'd actually go out today. Day, uh, but I do understand your sentiments putting it out. But I think you are having a misplaced kindness. 
to a wonderful festival. Council Moran, Council Moran, did you second it? Yeah, I did, Lord Mayor, I agree with all of that. Um, I, I, this is, call me kind, is, is exactly the point. Um, I think when this originally came up, I think we all sort of looked at each other and thought, you know, is this really going to be able to be done? And I think we probably tried our best to uh, to allow the festival a chance to, to remedy it. Um, things are taking too long. It is a an eyesore, and whether it will become any better is absolutely uh, up for debate. I have a feeling that it won't, and I have a feeling that we're going to be stuck with this for some considerable time. I would like to see it pulled out. I think the time has come. Uh, the, the residents of North Adelaide seem, seemingly uh, take that view, and uh, as we know, we take the views of the residents of North Adelaide very seriously. Unless it's a capital city issue, then we do the other way. Um, but um, but that, of course, is not the point, Lord Mayor. The point is that the pontoon should be scuttled uh, and uh, and sent to Davy Jones' locker, uh, which is uh, to coin a term. So I, I totally agree. I totally support Councillor Moran on this, and uh, I think you have to rip the band-aid off and uh, let's get it out. I now look for our next speaker, Councillor Abiad, followed by Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Martin, Councillor Abiad. Um, Lord Mayor, um, I'm not going to uh, ramble on. Um, I think you know, Councillor, Councillor Moran and Councillor Antic have taken a view uh, to terminate the lease as per the lease agreement is. The issue is, is we have current contractors working on the project to complete the project. Um, and we have a question on our hand as a council whether we want to stop that and just basically say, oh, well, you know, you've been delayed two weeks or three weeks. Like we've never done that before as a council on council projects and property and construction projects in the city and a billion of other things. I don't for once agree on any part of how the Adelaide Festival has conducted themselves in this process, Lord Mayor. I think it's been appalling and I've got to say this at the least. But I'm not prepared yet to pull the plug until I see a completed product. We have a 2019 Dev Day. There would not be one day if I'm in this chamber in 2019 that I would support uh, an approach in which the pontoon stays there. The only reason that I'm not going to be voting to support Councillor Moran's motion and seconded by <coughs> Councillor Antic, the only reason is because currently the whole Riverbank precinct is under construction. That is the only reason that I'm prepared to wait a little bit longer to see a good outcome for the festival and for the precinct. So at this stage, I'd ask members to please just cool down, allow them the time to the end of the month so they can finish this. I've received, we've received communication to that that would occur. If that's not going to occur, if anything changes, I would like to know, and this is really important here, that the Adelaide Festival communicates with our administration and then with the elected members what they're doing and the progress of that work, uh, because it's not very nice to keep the elected members in the dark. These are the sort of things that occur uh, on the back of this as a result. So I'd ask members to please just keep this going at this stage. Let's await the final product since they're working through the construction. And if that's the case and things don't progress, then I'm happy and more than happy to push for a termination clause on that lease and for council to move um, in the opposite direction to have the pontoon removed from the riverbank precinct, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Corbell. Um, I, I had agreed uh, originally with the uh, motion to uh, pull out the pontoon um, when it was put back when, but uh, given that uh, council made a decision to allow it to stay in, and subsequently the um, uh, uh, contracts have been let and now under, 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 under works, doing the work, I, I, I don't think it would be fair to, uh, to, uh, to uh, support this motion for that reason. But, um, Thank you, Councillor. I now go to Councillor Martin, Councillor Corbell, Councillor Slammer, Councillor Martin, then, ca then Councillor... Uh, Lord Mayor, look, I agree with the other side of the room. <laughs> Now, that is the best thing you've said. Well, well, Councillor Martin, you must be commended. The CEO is going to build a statue to you. Members, can I please now go to Councillor Corbell, followed by Councillor Slamour? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I um, have consistently 
voted to um, pull it out and to get rid of it. I don't. I think it's an eyesore, and um, it's unfortunate that it's been permitted to stay. But having said that, now that it has been voted to keep it in, and work has been undertaken, bookings have been made. Um, despite the delay, I am going to support to keep it. In. I'm not going to support this motion that it be put out. Councillor Starmer, followed by Councillor Clarehan. I won't be as quick as Councillor Martin because I've spoken all night. Um, Lord Mayor, I went down there this morning. I had a look and I spoke to the contractor. And one of the workers told me that they couldn't start because of inclement weather. They actually had some legitimate excuses as to what happened. So I'm taking that on board. Understand further that they've already committed contract with the SATC, SACA. Um, sorry, Ashes. There's, there's things happening. I think it'd be quite stupid to um, change our minds now. So I can't support it. So. Thank you, Councillor Slammer. Councillor Corbell. No, Claire, my mistake. Sorry. Can't read my writing. Started with the C, Lord Mayor. We'll get there. Look, this has been a situation <laughs> where will we, won't we? Uh, we decided we would um, support them to retain it and to find some reactivation. It's happening. We would have egg on our face if we then was churlish enough to actually say, get it out. I mean, the work is happening. We need to stick with our decision. Um, it hasn't been a great process. And yes, it's looked disgusting. And yes, we've been embarrassed as when the aeronautical conference was on, people from all over the world and what it looked like, it really was a huge embarrassment. So I understand the desire to just get it out because we it has we have been let down, but I think it's gone too far and I'm going to I'm not going to support this motion. I'm going to support uh, work continuing and for its reactivation. Members, no further hands. Councillor Moran, something up. Uh, yes, look, it isn't too late to get it out. It will be too late if you let the festival spend another $150,000 on it. You can't have it both ways. You can't do a Megan and say, I agree with everything Anne's saying. It's been a dog of a project. It's, you know, we don't like it. It's been an embarrassment, but I'm going to vote against the motion. I'm sick of hearing that. If you all agree with me, vote for the freaking motion. Not one of you likes this. Not one of it's Language, that it's been a, a good project. But freaking's okay. Um, oh, it's not a barge, it's a frigate. It's a frigate. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so look, come on. This is this is the break we needed. They have they have not fulfilled their contract twice. Let them have the courage of your convictions. Once again, you're not being kind. None of you like it. Face your ratepayers and go down and hear what they want to say. You are just representatives, advocates of the ratepayers, and they don't like it. You're not advocates of the Festival of Arts, much as we love it. Um, but yeah, we are a capital city. Um, it, is a t it is not a successful production. It's not their fault. Um, Obviously, mistakes were made, all good-heartedly. I don't care. I, mean, I don't care, Councillor Perry. If we have egg on our faces, I'm, we're not here to look. And I don't care if we look stupid. I don't think we will. I think people will will, will hail our sensible, brave, and strong decision to make a decision. I think we have egg on our faces and look stupid when we say, oh, I agree with everything she's saying, but I can't vote for the motion. I think that's stupid. So I put the motion and ask you to vote for it. Members, I put it to the floor. Those in favour? <laughs> Those against? Vision. Motion fails. Division. Division. All those members in favour, please rise. Councillor Antic, Councillor Moran. While I'm standing, Lord Mayor, um, mm -hmm. I'd like to um, lift a, a motion on notice that was left on the table. Uh, Councillor, not at this point in time. We have some other motions on notice which we will deal with first. So I'll come back to you. We can do this with motions without notice. I, I, I can't sit through any more motions. Councillor, I'm sorry, you're going to have to. Members, if we, members, if we can invite Councillor Hender back into the council chamber, we'll continue this meeting in an orderly manner. <laughs> Yes, right.
We let us all make a deal that we'll just vote the way we want to vote and not debate. <laughs> <laughs> now, members, thank you. Welcome back, Councillor Hender. Councillor Wilkinson, you have a motion on notice regarding deputations in public forums. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I hope that members are supportive of this motion and my next motion so that we can deal with them quickly. But this is basically about allowing people for the weekend to see what council's business is so that you can put in a deputation request on the Monday before the Tuesday meeting rather than just having Friday morning after it goes out on the internet. Thank you, council members. Why don't you talk to this by exception? So if you disagree with it, you might speak to it. And if you're quiet, we'll take it that you do agree with it. Councillor Clarehan, you seconded. I will speak to it, Lord Mayor. It makes absolute sense um, if we don't get our agendas out until late and then expect people to have registered within two hours. It's, it's just unfair. Um, I think it's farcical. This makes absolute sense and I support it. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Antic. I have an amended motion, Lord Mayor. Oh, I can hear it. No, it's all right. Everyone calm down. It's going to be fine. <laughs> It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. Okay, I'd like to add at the end of it, and all of the words, and that the time allowed for questions uh, to uh, speaking in public forums and/or deputations be limited to a total of five minutes. No. Well, no, it's not yeah. question and answer. I'll, I'll speak to that in a minute. If I get a second. I'll look to a second. Do you have a second? So you're adding another part to the motion as to what you yep. just said. You have a second, Councillor Moran. You can speak to it. Okay. Now. Well, I, I just, having endured an hour of cross examination of the two first people that came in today, I went, I, I went back to the books, Lord Mayor, because I had plenty of time, and I was listening intently, but I did in between breaths, went back to the standing orders, and was reminded of the fact that there is actually no provision for questions to be asked in the standing orders with respect to public forums and deputations. The point of the exercise is, Lord Mayor, and I'm happy to read it out from the current standing order because I've got about two and a half minutes left and I know you're all excited. Um, public forum, this is a public forum, there are two as you are aware. Public forum provides an opportunity for the Lord Mayor and the members of council to hear from members of the public in a formal setting in relation to issues in which the council has a direct interest or responsibility. There are other sub paragraphs. There's also the issue of deputations, but Lord Mayor, it says nothing about them being cross-examined on all aspects of their life. Things we've seen, TV shows we've watched, things we want to say, little comments that come along. Um, sorry, Sue, listen to you all night. This is what it sounds like when someone else talks. Um, the, uh, so the point is, Lord Mayor, that this is not an exercise in people wasting our time. Um, it is simply, we've all listened to you, Sue, just be quiet for a minute. Um, this is an exercise in people coming to the chamber, standing there and telling us in five minutes why it is they want a motion or something that's on our agenda. Not to sit here and have a back and forth. That's what they say. To actually put a motion in, to put a, a point in there which actually stipulates giving them some time is actually a service. Otherwise, we're going to end up with people, possibly me, every week from now on standing up saying, Where's this in the standing orders, Lord Mayor? Because enough's enough. That's out of control. So I ask you to support it. It's quite reasonable. Okay, members, you have an amendment made by Councillor Randy. You seconded by Councillor Randy. You wish to speak to the amendment? Yes, I do. Um, I, uh, many moons ago, um, under Alfred Wong, we brought in the forums, and it was very um, unusual for the council to do. And but uh, we felt that it was nice to hear from the views of the. Uh, from the constituents and make the council a lot more people friendly. But we never envisaged the travesty to what we brought in that we see now. It was never meant to be some sort of star chamber where 4,000 Dorothy Dixes are asked and people actually debate. I'm not criticising anybody in particular. It's tempting to do that when the meeting is not chaired as um, per the standing orders. And um, I'm not criticising Lord Mayor now, you, uh, you weren't there when we decided it. Uh, Stephen Yarwood was very, very strict on that. And it's not just a matter of saying um, you don't want to hear the person's views or you don't want to enlarge on it. It is not fair. A person comes in, they give their five minutes. It is, it is a cruel and unusual thing. And I, I know a lot of people that would come to the public forum, but having sat in the gallery, they'll never do that. 
because I'm not a politician. I, I can't think on my feet. I can. I want to just give my five minutes, and uh, unless it's what, sorry, what did you say in the second sentence? Points of clarification have been uh, completely ignored now. They're not points of clarification. They're points of clarification <coughs> of a debate. The reason that with the original points of clarification was what did you say then? Excuse me. Not oh points of clarification. You know, let's have a debate. It is. It is not what I meant. It is not what we did. And until this Lord Mayor term, we've never done it before. I will not attend while the forums are on because it's ridiculous. We've got really important things to do now, and we spent hours <coughs> Sunday. In fact, we spent longer on the deputations and forums than we spend there. And you know who you are. Um, who's doing this, you, you're abusing the time of the chamber and you're abusing the time that we make decisions and it is, it is just ridiculous and I urge other members if this, this type of behaviour behind, just wait till it's over. It, it's not what it was meant to be, it's cruel on the people that come in here and I urge the Lord Mayor to, to make it to, I urge you to vote for this because I've spoken time and time to Lord Mayor and he doesn't understand what it was meant for. Um, so I, I agree, five minutes is plenty. It focuses your mind. And let's face it, there's many people in this chamber that need their minds focused. Me, me as well. Councillor Moran, if we now go to Councillor Martin and Councillor Corbell. Uh, uh, Lord Mayor, I wonder if this can be taken in parts. That is to say, the original motion on notice from Councillor Wilkinson and the second part be treated as a, a new item. We would need to vote on the amendment first. It's an amendment to include the two points. Yeah, yeah. We would need to vote on the amendment first to include it into the motion, and then you could ask the move okay. substantive, which is Councillor Lawrence, right. and whether he'd be happy enough to take it apart. So we wouldn't do it now, you could do it later. Um, well, I'll. Just All right, I'll vote against it. I'll speak against it also, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I. Uh, uh, I'm tempted to say if uh, if the deputations and the questions uh, are a problem for Councillor Antic and Councillor Moran, they needn't attend. However, I won't say that. What I will say is that the, the process of asking questions is incredibly valuable. It elicits information that informs councillors. And indeed, I'm reminded that just last night, Councillor Moran questioned Andrew Daniels from the Stadium Management Authority for what I thought was the better part of 15 minutes. Indeed, it was only your intervention, Lord Mayor, that ceased the questioning. The questioning, however, uh, was beneficial. It provided a great deal of information to the members of APLA, who ultimately voted in the manner that Councillor Moran was hoping that they would. So, uh, the, uh, the act of asking questions is uh, not a disservice to elected members, it is actually a benefit. And moreover, uh, I think uh, to be uh, uh, asked to accept the information that's presented to us without any opportunity of exploring that and understanding the motivations for the things that are said, as would apply in the case of a five minute limit. I mean, how many questions is that? One from Councillor Hender and maybe half a question from Councillor Clarehan? It's, it's not acceptable. Uh, it is, however, within the province of the Lord Mayor, if the Lord Mayor believes that the questioning is out of hand, to intervene and to bring the meeting to order. Uh, and if, if that is the Lord Mayor's view, that the meeting does need to be brought to order, then uh, that, that is your, you have that authority, Lord Mayor. So look, I, I just uh, urge members to vote against this amendment. Uh, moreover, coming as it does at 9.17, uh, well, coming as it does at 9.17 without any warning, without the opportunity to hear uh, detailed debate from everyone in the room who's getting a bit uh, uh, tired and snappy, um, it, it really is not appropriate. Uh, so, look, just vote against it, please. Members, do I have any further debate on the proposed amendment? Councillor Abbey, are you discussing the proposed amendment? Yes. Yep. Councillor Corbell. Sorry, my mistake. Councillor Corbell, then Councillor Abbey. I am speaking in support of this because just going over the finer detail of the standing orders, it is pretty clear that it's limited to five members of public, and that's for a public forum, to be able to speak at any one particular meeting, whether it's a council meeting or a committee meeting, and um, that they could speak for five minutes. And it doesn't say anything about questioning. And we have had instances where 
one member will, will speak for five minutes and then we'll have 15 to 20 minutes of questioning, which to me is quite excessive, as in particular if you've got more than one person who's then questioned multiple times. So that's where we can add another hour onto a meeting, which is not the intent. And hearing from Councillor Moran, who was here when this was introduced, it, we're going well beyond what the original intent was, and I don't think it necessarily serves a purpose. I think if these members of the public want to address council, they should have an opportunity to do that. But I don't think that there needs to be all of this questioning that's taking place and we've seen happen time after time after time again. So I will support this and I think it enhances the original motion of Councillor Wilkinson, uh, which I also think is a good idea. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abia. Um, Lord Mayor, um, I, I agree with the sentiments, but there's one thing you're missing, and I'm just talking from experience, and maybe Councillor Moran can add to this. Uh, deputations and public forums have all been five minutes. Uh, there have rarely been ever any questions to ask. And the reason there isn't is because we have a process at which through administration's reports, because most deputations come back to Council in relation to issues. We have hear, we've had to hear sometimes from the public information, I'll be honest with you, that it's not accurate. And if council was to also inform its decision based on what was discussed and was suddenly anchored with a decision or made a decision, we need to trust our administration that they've done all the relevant research, the paperwork, to give us the best possible advice on the day for us to make a decision. The opportunity for a public forum and a deputation is for individuals in our community to be heard. But this is not the only time they get heard. They have an opportunity to contact us, they have an opportunity to email us, to meet with us, for us to go out and see them. So there's many ways at which we can ask questions and speak with them. I am the reason there isn't any questions in the standing orders, and I've looked into this when we reviewed the standing orders at the beginning a couple of years ago, is because there shouldn't be any questions asked at the time. That is why. That is why, Lord Mayor, you, as the chair of the meeting, you, you permit that, and that's at your discretion and I respect that. But I would ask you maybe to take into account from a standing orders perspective that we don't get to ask questions. And if we do that, I would then not support Councillor Antic's motion because there isn't a need for it. The reason the standing orders are silent on questions is because they don't exist. That's why it's silent. Can I, can I just, Lord Mayor, if, that's, if that undertaking is given, I'd be happy to withdraw the amendment. <laughs> Yeah. To, adhere, to adhere to the standing orders as they said. Okay, members, I'm going to ask a question of our administration at this point in time before I then hand you back to Councillor Hendrick to sum up in the proposed amendment. So, Councillor Hendrick, I'll, I'll come to you. There are two things, members. I would suggest this is also a byproduct of a change to the structure of having committees and the council chamber. Well, the council committees were run on the same format largely as what we did in this council chamber and people did do deputations to committees and spoke at a committee meeting. They don't necessarily have that opportunity anymore. We may be seeing an increase as a result in this council chamber. I just ask you to consider that. The other thing is, and I hear what you're saying members, but I'd also want some advice from administration as to by in any way would we be falling foul of the meeting provision section of the Local Government Act in terms of what is the interrelationship between the standing orders of City Council and the meeting provisions of the Local Government Act. So are you able to answer that question? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, we should be providing you with quality advice so you can make an informed decision. At this time, we haven't been able to give you any advice. And I would suggest to you, this is an important issue, you need to get that. And uh, I think it, it would be ideal if we could be given the opportunity to come back to you with that information. Okay. I'm happy to do that. Uh, and we are on the undertaking that we brought to the next council chamber and that we have it properly addressed. Uh, just to point out once again, though, that until that time, I will be calling uh, procedural orders on the standing orders. So. Understand. Members, so the amendment has been withdrawn. You'd like to speak now. You're speaking back on the substantive now. I'd just like to make a comment on Councilman. this because it's going to go off and I just want to make a comment. I think because just because the standing orders are silent about whether you can ask a question doesn't mean they're banning questions. Let's just be clear about that. Um, and I personally choose to very rarely ask questions because I want to limit the amount of time that we spend on the deputations and the forums. But often when the questions are asked, I find them, the answers quite useful. I don't think we should be limiting our, ourselves um, to any significant extent. I think it is something that can be managed by the chair of the meeting on the on the evening, and um, I'm I'm keen that we 
allow our democratic processes the, the broadest opportunity we can, rather than to start limiting all. Okay, members, I don't see any further debate, so I'm going to go back oh, to Cal. Yeah. Oh, can I say something, please? Now I'll just wait and we'll get the groans and the moans and the bullying. Councillor Clarehan, you've already spoken, so you can only ask a question. Why have spoken before? Councillor Mayan? Have I spoken to this motion? Yes, I you did. have. We're I back to this extent. Have you seconded? Right. Okay. Yes. Councillor Wilkerson, would you like to sum up on your motion, please? Sure. Summed up. Sure. Members, I've put this before you. Those in favour? Sorry, what are we talking about? The substantive sure. motion. Yeah. 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 Those in favour, members. Those against? The substantive motion is carried. Members, I now take you to item 10.4, Councillor Wilkinson. You have a motion notice regarding front garden reinstatement, page 282. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, likewise, I hope that members can see the uh, logic uh, behind this this motion. I'll just uh, state. Uh, moving is printed, Councillor. Moving is printed. You are. You need a seconder. Do we have one, Councillor Clarehan? Back to you, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, uh, I'll just state that uh, I could have a perceived conflict of interest because this pertains to doing changes to a building and there's a possibility that I might be engaged at some future point in time to people, but uh, I have to state that for the record. Um, so um, I had observed over the years cars parked in front setbacks. It's a bad look. I've got illustrations, the photographs, you can see cars with the boots hanging out over the footpath. It's a safety issue with people backing out over the footpaths um, where you should have uh, front fences and gardens and verandas. You've just got paved areas and parking in front of that. It's, it's predominantly with the older buildings where it really spoils the, uh, the look of our streetscapes. But people would not relinquish that off-street parking unless they're guaranteed some on-street parking. And the purpose of this motion is to get the administration to look at a permit scheme whereby if someone relinquishes their parking in the front setback, they get a designated park right out in front of their property, be it residential or commercial, where currently there's a yellow line where nobody can park. And when you look at the photographs, you can see you can see driveway crossovers, there's no parking on the street, and then you see you know cars parked in the front setback. And it makes a lot of sense to have those cars parked actually on the road and a curb and a street tree and and a fence and, and a front garden. So that's the intention. It's obviously an incentive scheme because you can't compel people to relinquish it in. But having a scheme like this, which uh, provides some incentive for people to uh, relinquish this undesirable parking that you know much of it's been approved in past decades and stuff like that, um, you know, it's going to make a big improvement. You go down Gilly Street, look at some of the examples, um, some of the ones photographed, you can see the potential benefit to the city. So um, you know, I think it's got real potential to, uh, uh, you know, if, if taken up to make really meaningful difference improvements to the uh, streetscapes of Adelaide and, and also to the safety of our footpaths. And I think having cars with their boots sticking out over the footpath is kind of the situations what we have is, is, is not a good uh, thing from any perspective. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I'd again possibly encourage you to, if you're speaking against this matter to speak and if you're speaking for it, well, you'll be voting for it. So, Members. Councillor Clarehan, you have you seconded you wish to speak? I'll reserve my right, Lord. Thank you, Councillor. Member, do I... Councillor Mark? <laughs> Lord Mayor, look, I just wonder whether the mover would be prepared to ex accept a variation or an amendment. I'm not sure procedurally of, of which no, he can't. Um, well, look, I, I have mentioned this to Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, the information which has been provided... Councillor Martin, you can suggest a variation or you can move an amendment. If you suggest a variation, Councillor Wilkinson can either accept it or reject it. Okay, well, my, my variation uh, with Councillor Wilkinson's approval, uh, Wilkinson's approval will be that uh, three reads um, um, the application and implications of adding this new category of permits, and I'm picking up the wording from the administration, uh, within the on-street parking scheme uh, be considered uh, at the workshop at committee on November 21st, 2017, as part of any trial flowing from the North Adelaide local area. <laughs> parking Councillor and oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, uh, item three on the motion says amends council policy to prohibit the approval of any new crossovers to parking in front setbacks currently. Yep. You're proposing to amend that, uh, to vary that with the... Well, uh, before that becomes policy, I'm proposing that 
this this matter it, broadly, that is parking permits, is coming to committee as the administration notes at paragraph six on the 21st, which is next week. And categories of permits, I understand, are to be part of that discussion. Therefore, uh, an endorsement of one and two, coupled with the reference to the workshop in three, would effect it would effectively mean that the matter is appropriately deferred to a much broader uh, contextual discussion about permits. Okay, Councillor Wilkinson, it's a yes or a no answer. Do you accept the variation? I think I that. Sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. Your seconder was Councillor Clarehan. You do. So, do you want me to give you that wording again? We'll capture the wording, and then I'll continue on with the substantive debate. Okay. So, if we could just assist, please, Rachel, with the exact wording. Uh, three. The application and implications of adding this new category of permits be considered in the workshop at committee on 21st of November 2017 to consider parking permits during discussion of the North Adelaide Local Area and Traffic Parking Management Plan and any trials uh, which flow from that discussion. Is that satisfactory? And to the speaker, uh, to the uh, mover of the uh, motion? Yeah, okay. So you've got comfort on that variation, so we now have a varied motion. Do you wish to speak to any further to it, or can I keep this to No, I, I just endorse, uh, as I told uh, Councillor Wilkinson, I endorse the principle. I understand what he's trying to achieve, um, I, rather than us setting a policy now that may be in conflict with whatever flows on the 21st, we should incorporate that into the discussion and it can move forward as part of any trials that uh, Council at Committee may determine and subsequently endorse at Council on the 28th of November. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So, members, we have a varied motion. Any further debate? Councillor Wilkinson, back to you to sum up. Uh, yeah, just briefly, um, people won't relinquish this undesirable on-street uh, off, off parking and front setbacks unless council's offering them uh, an incentive to do that. So if, if, if this doesn't, doesn't get up, all of that ugly parking and front setbacks and unsafe seats will just, just exist forever. Okay. It's only by changing council policy and the way it deals with this that you actually get an improvement to the situation. Um, so uh, I'm very happy for it to be dealt with in the workshop. Um, and uh, uh, seek your support. Thank you, Council Wilkinson. Members, I put 10.4 before you. Those in favour? Those against? 10.4 to carry. 10.5, Councillor Martin, a motion and notice regarding the Aquatic Centre. Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, may I take the unusual step of asking the room if they'll endorse this? If they will, I have nothing to say. <laughs> Lord Mayor, I, I, I take comfort from the hands that I see, therefore. I'm... Councillor Martin, what do you think you've achieved? You... Uh, to be put, to be put rather. I need a motion to be put before you put it. So your moving is printed. Yep. You're seconding it. Would anyone like to move it to put? Councillor Abiyad's going to move it. Sorry, Councillor Abiyad. You've got a question first. I'll accept the question. Just quickly, it's not a question, Lord Mayor, just a remark. We are currently undertaking a business review of some of these things, and I'd like us before we sort of go out and ask for some money to ask, to, to know what we're asking for money for. Um, I know historically, if we can be provided with some information, it will be really important because I think when the Marion Aquatic Centre was built, there was a missed opportunity for the city as a result. Um, and I just want some background information on all of this, if, if that can come back as part of the report. Would you like that taken on notice as a question to the CEO, Councillor Abiyat? Yeah. Okay. So now, Councillor Mountain, I'm now conscious. Are you wanting to debate your? I'm just wanting to sum up, Lord Mayor, very briefly. Well, let me just ask: Is there any further yeah. debate, members? No. There isn't. Do you? Uh, all I wish to say, Lord Mayor, in answer to Councillor Abbeyard's concern, is that the matter was discussed at committee. Uh, I don't believe he was present at that meeting. There were a range of options presented to us by the administration involving capital expenditure. And all this motion seeks to do is to understand what the appetite among federal and state of politicians is 
and to give the Lord Mayor and the CEO the authority to, to ascertain that appetite before we proceed with any aspect of uh, that business plan. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? 10.5 carried. Members, motions without notice. Councillor Antic? I have one, Lord Mayor, and um, I'll just read it out. It's been distributed, it's probably on desks somewhere. Uh, and the uh, motion is that Council requests that administration prepare a report. You're moving as printed? Yeah, I'm moving as printed. Councillor Corbell seconding you? Yes. So Back to you, Councillor Antic. Thank you. Just to, inf just to inform the following issue to a report to inform the following issues which are confronting Hutt Street and the Hutt Street precinct, namely business and shop front vacancies anti-social, criminal and unsavoury behaviour and the overall amenity of the precinct. So I'll just very quickly, I know everyone's tired, it's what happens when we've uh, been at it for a while, but the issues of this, um, it's come, it's, it's, it, this, this has been a, a steady but very noticeable decline, particularly of the, um, the southern aspect of Hutt Street. Um, it, it, it's been pointed out to me in the last month or so, probably the last couple of weeks, and also increasing instance, incidences of um, trouble down that end of the street. Um, the, the, there are several parts though, and I'll perhaps start with the, the, the shop front vacancies. There are many, there are many police signs around down that, that part of the city. Um, it is a big multi-faceted problem and I accept that, some of which is a commercial uh, problem, that is, uh, you know, sometimes businesses move on and there are very varying reasons. Um, the overall amenity of the area, though, I have to say, is um, getting a little bit tired. Um, I think the streetscape itself is becoming a little bit difficult uh, in terms of, you know, we were going to get to all of this with the Main Streets program and it sort of fell away. So we've ended up not doing it. And I think Hutt Street is very much overdue for uh, a bit of a revisit in that Can't sense. So, can I just briefly interrupt you? And I yeah. do apologise, but uh, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery, <coughs> I just acknowledge that, if, and I don't think you're doing it, but if anyone is filming or taking photographs in this gallery, it's not permitted without the Lord Mayor's permission. Back to you, Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, so thank you, Lord Mayor. So, uh, so there are those three problems. Um, the one which may or may not be contributing to that, though, is is. Uh, um, the, the first of what's now the second one, uh, the antisocial and criminal behaviour. There is an increasing problem, particularly down the southern aspect of, of Hutt Street, Lord Mayor, um, with uh, uh, homeless people um, wandering the streets up and down, heading backwards and forwards between the parklands and various other parts of Hutt Street. Um, I have been advised of uh, at least one incident of an assault recently. I witnessed one myself uh, of some um, a young lady down that neck of the woods. Um, absolutely out of control uh, to the point where um, she was threatening passers-by and the police were called. It's a very common occurrence. Um, the, uh, some of the businesses down that, that end have reported it uh, many, many times uh, that there is trouble just generally. And what that is from, I don't know. I don't know what the spike is, but it's been reported to me uh, more and more and more in the last uh, in the last few weeks. So um, I think this is a, a multifaceted um, problem down that, that part of the world and I think that there is cause for us to say right well we um, do a very good job I think of managing some of these issues from, from our own internal point of view I think we, we've done that and we've shown that with um, some of the problems we've had with the drinking in the South Parklands I think that's been handled very well and very respectfully but at the end of the day Lord Mayor uh, these are public safety issues they're state government issues first and foremost but we can influence and we can bring people together and we can speak to uh, the um, uh, facilities down that neck of the woods, the Hutt Street Centre and, and others, to, to see why, what has changed, what, what, what's going on down there, why, why is this happening? Um, you know, it, at the end of the day, the, the, the safety and the amenity of the residents and the businesses down there has to be a priority, Lord Mayor, uh, and they're not feeling it at the moment. So we need an opportunity to have a look at it and to uh, have our staff who are very capable of this uh, report back to us, find out why why it is, what we can do, who we can speak to, and whether or not there's more we can do. So I'd ask people to support it. Your second uh, was Councillor Corbell. Councillor Antic? Um, I think Councillor Antic said most of what I wanted to say, Lord Mayor, and I'm happy to reserve my right. It is getting late. Members to the floor. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. Do I have any debate members? I don't see any hands. I go back to Councillor Antic. Summer? Summer. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the motion without notice. Members, do I have any further motions without notice? Councillor Moran, you have your hand up. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to lift from the table Councillor Martin and Councillor Clarehan, I think. Um, motion uh, the new, uh, regarding the new start Council allowance. Martin and Councillor Corbell, I understand. Oh, sorry, Councillor Corbell. Sorry, Councillor Corbell. Um, allowancement from Council meeting held on the 24th of October 2016. Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. As a procedural motion, just so members, I need a procedural motion, but before I do, I need to give you the courtesy if you want to comment on it to lift a matter off the table from the 24th of October. You've been clear about which item it was, Councillor Moran. You have, yeah. Councillor Abbey, you have a question, you have a debate. Uh, the vote to argue not to lift it off the table, Lord Mayor. Yeah, it's your right to do so, sir. Would you like me to do so now? Certainly, we move to lift it off the table. No, there's Moving an item off the table can enable a debate and then we need to vote to lift it off the table. So as per any we other motion... I move to lift it off the table and I have a second <clears throat> Yes, but yes, you I also have other council members who may agree or disagree with you. All right, so Hassan's yes. not moving anything? No, he's not moving it. He's debating it. He's debating whether to lift it off the table or not. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, okay. I took the time to uh, meet with representatives uh, from, uh, from the various networks with regards uh, to this motion specifically, the New Start Allowance, um, Shelter SA, um, and also um, another couple of organisations at which one of them have come here and met with me in council, and I've explained my position very clearly to them. I think this council has a very important role to play in making sure that all our amenities are accessible for people of a lower income. Uh, we have a opportunity to play and a role to play in trying to advocate for job creation in our city, in our state. Uh, I don't think, Lord Mayor, we have a role to play uh, in advocating for another body that gets to make other decisions on a whole heap of budget issues when we don't have a full picture on what kitty we are robbing to pay another kitty. This is not our job, Lord Mayor, especially when we don't have a full visibility of the decisions made at a federal level and how are they made specifically. I think it's important that our local government does not interfere in state and federal affairs, especially when it comes to a whole host of issues relating to things we don't have full visibility Excuse of. Excuse me, point of order, Lord Mayor. This is not about debating lifting off the table. This is debating the substantive motion. I'm debating why it shouldn't be lifted off the table. No, no. I'll allow it, but you need to you need to bring that together very quickly as to why you're debating whether we you want to lift it off the table or not. The reason, uh, Lord Mayor, just to just to continue with uh, with my debate point, uh, just as we just as we do not like state and federal government interfering in local government issues, this issue must stay laid on the table because it is not of any business of local government to intervene in such processes. This is why I would argue that this needs to stay on the table and not to be debated by this council. It's not the place of this council to have those debates and have those motions heard. Okay, members, do I have any further debate about the relative merits of laying on the table or yes, not? As a mover, I'd like to say that um, in any council term, I uh, will take um, sympathy with your vote, I actually voted to lay on the table, but in any council term, a matter that lays on the table has to be lifted off the table in the <coughs> term of this council. So, Councillor um, Hassan's um, suggestion that it should stay on the table, it can't stay on the table. Not now, forever, that's correct. It has to come off the table and be debated before the end of term. So if it could stay on forever, I might have some sympathy, but it is going to come off. Now we have an LGA meeting next week where this is um, uh, there is a letter from other councils, um, and if we're going to take it off the table, we might as well take it off the table now so we can show some brotherhood with our other councils. It's not suggesting that um, I've read the letter, it's very benign. Um, it is not offensive or bossing the federal government around in any way, but it is supporting the uh, people that came to see us about New Start. So, as I said, it, it has to be lifted off the table. We might as well lift it where it has some some um, relevance rather than just lift it and debate it on the last council um, meeting of the year. Okay, so members, I don't see any further hands. Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, I just want to thank uh, Councillor Moran and Councillor Virtual for proposing to lift this off the table. Um, it, it is important, and I do dispute the argument being put by 
Councillor Abia, this is not a matter that we ought to concern ourselves with, that we should stay out of state and federal matters, because we do a large part of our agenda uh, on matters related to federal and state affairs. And indeed, tonight we voted to send uh, advice to the state government about uh, the preservation of locations and inscriptions on statues. Uh, we've talked about, um, at, at least dealt with matters related to the Ad Adelaide Oval, which involves the state government. Uh, and moreover, the Local Government Act, and I'm happy for the Chief uh, Executive to deny it, but the Local Government Act does include specific reference to local government having the capacity to advise and inform state and federal government. In those circumstances, there can be no argument for not lifting it off the table. Okay, members, I'd like to, at some point soon, take this to a vote whether to lift it off the table or not. Councillor Antic? Uh, we'll have a chance then to speak to the substantive. <laughs> Just about the merits of lifting it off the table or not. Yes, you need to contain your arguments that. Fo following, depending on the outcome, yes, of course. Thank you. Okay. Members, for the purposes of your debate, I just want to do a fact check so you make an informed decision. Um, I, it is my understanding that Councillor Moran is quite correct in terms of these mat matters cannot lay indefinitely on the table, but I would just like a fact check to confirm whether it is during this term of council or as the first meeting of the next term of council that any matters which are laid on the table by the, by the prior term need to be dealt with. Uh, Rudy, can you clarify that the B for the um, for Sure, for the Lord Mayor. So uh, if the matter is not lifted off the table during this council term, it will then lapse and will need to be presented by the CEO in a report at the first meeting of the new council. Thank you, Rudy. Now, Councillor Moran, would you like to sum up on your, your moving to lift this off the table? Do you want to sum up? Do you want to take the straight of the vote? Summed up. So members, to lift or not to lift, those in favour? Those against? So members, let me explain what happens now procedurally. This matter now is off the table. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I see your hand. This takes us back to the 24th of October, 2017, and we resume the debate where we left off. Now, it was a matter moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Corbell, which means on the substantive, Councillor Martin and Councillor Corbell cannot speak to it because you've already spoken. I now go to Councillor Moran, which I can do. I move that the motion be put. Oops, if I get a second. <laughs> okay. Most people have spoken, everybody's made up their mind. I don't like using the gag order, but at this late time of night, I don't want to go drag it all out again. It's your right to do this. Your first hand up was Councillor Wilkinson. So. Uh, so, members, I've got a mover and a seconder to put. I now need to put it to the floor. This motion has been put, members. Those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Members, that concludes that matter which was opened on the 24th of October. Members, do I have any further items, motions, without notice? I don't, so I'm now going to take you to what I understand would be two confidential items. Members, can I please have a mover to exclude item 12.1, DLM, seconded by Councillor Hender. Any debate members? I put this before you to move that item into confidence. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. And members, I then take you to item 13.1. To move that item into confidence, can I have a mover, please, members? Yeah. Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Aviard. Any debate? Those in favour? This is the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. We have two items in confidence, members. Can I ask any members of the general public not associated with these matters to leave the council chamber? Right. I would need the members back in the chamber. I need the same members back in the chamber. I've just been advised. Can you explain that, please, Carl? 
Sorry, through the presiding member, there was a, a motion moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson, that we put the motion. You then voted on that, so you voted in favour to put the motion, so we then have to put the motion. I know it sounds a bit funny, yes. but it's actually two separate steps. Yeah. It doesn't matter, but it's one of each side, so it's like having pairs, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, that was my mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> Well, they actually went to the Let's just vote on it. That's the same answer. Let's vote. Oliver's got to see if we can find it. Pardon, Councillor? Oliver's got to see if we can find it. Can we keep going while they're all Well, there's pretty much the feeling of the confidence. We're in confidence now as well. And then when I move back into public, deal with this matter. Okay, so confidential items mean. these members back into public. Okay, members, we've got a full compliment. Councillor Moran has moved. Uh, we have a full compliment. Now, members, the matter which we brought back to the table with regards to the 24th of October, I need your formal vote. Those in favour? Those against? That item is now carried. So, members, thank you. I formally declare this meeting closed at 9.49pm on Tuesday, the 14th of November. Thank you, members. <laughs>